Block 1 Audiobook Title I died and was reincarnated as warship in a fantasy world Vol 02 and 03 Volume 2 CH1 Warming up the boilers OK, I am ready. One day I notified the god that I am ready to try something new. Great, now close your eyes. I did as he ordered. I felt chilly and then I lost my consciousness. Announcement I strongly recommend you to read the prologue 1 and 2 if you did not. What greeted me was that god, you did a good job, kid. To fight against a wolf with your bare hands, commendable achievement for a little girl. It is time? Yes. I was exhausted, I said farewell to the memories of my life, of my friends and parents and prepared myself for the inevitable, you can decide what kind of ship you will become. Have I misheard him, to choose what kind of ship I am going to be? I feel deja vu. Never mind that, I already know what I want. I want to be a huge warship with big guns. Understood, kid. If you will find that your choice is too much for you, I might change your ship. I doubt it will be necessary. Farewell. Don't die again. Yeah, I will do my best to avoid such pleasure. I opened my eyes in a forest, might be the same one where I died. I stood up and almost fell immediately. I heard that there might be changes in balance but I'd never thought that they can be to such an extent. I checked myself out and oh god, I am hot. I have a slender body with thin waist and gentle arms. I have silky baby skin and the most important feature, which already made me unstable, is of a nice size. Not on the largest side but surely above average. My hair also did not disappoint. Platinum blonde tied in braid and long enough to touch my bottom. My hair was so pleasant to touch that I immediately forgot about the softer things. I am wearing long one-piece blue dress and a blue cloak on top of it. On my head I am wearing a wide-brimmed lady hat. What do I have with me? The same lunchbox I had before with a sticker on top of it. Meals refresh every six hours. They should be enough for you not to die of starvation. Don't expect too much. Thank you. Also I saw a purse. When I opened it I, whoever the previous owner of this body was, she had a good knowledge in undergarments. The black ones are surely her favorite. And finally comes my gear. On my left hip I found a small scabbard. I took out a knife with a long and thin blade. Isn't that a stiletto? The stiletto is lavishly decorated with engravings. They appear to be gold inlaid. I also saw an engraved phrase, for the eternal glory of the Royal Navy of course I wanted to try it out. I walked to a tree and stabbed it a couple of times. The blade pierced the bark like a hot knife pierces warm butter. However, my wish was big guns which I am yet to summon. While I was about to start swearing I thought a bit. I keep feeling deja vu. My gut was telling me to not act wrongly. Considering that the body has a refined looks and noble-like characteristics I think if I act like a noble it will not hurt me. I want my guns to show up. And they did. Two large pieces of ship hull to my left and right. On each of the pieces were two gun turrets and small black sticks. On my belt appeared smaller guns turrets. I need to look what I have. How do I do this? Stats? HMS Delight, BC, Mod 18 20 Accuracy, 0 100 AC shows hit chance. Reload. 0 100 road shows how fast your guns reload after attack. Recoil. 100 0 RC shows how much impact recoil has on your firing. Machinery. 125 MC shows the chance of malfunction in propulsion and maneuvering systems. Guns minus 125th of a giganton shows the chance of critical malfunction in loading and firing systems. You don't want to ignore it. Equipment, 125x shows the chance of malfunction in non-vital systems like radars communication and navigation. Firepower, 100fp shows how much damage your main and secondary guns can do. AA-100AA shows how much damage your AA guns can do. HP-44000 horsepower shows how much damage you can survive. Your armor is strong enough to sustain severe damage. Evasion, 
51F shows your chances of evading an enemy attack without damage. Main guns 1032 MK4 loaded, 08 fire at 0.10.5 RPM. Range minus 10 km. Secondary guns 427 MK VI loaded, 06 fire at 0.17 RPM. Range minus 7 km. Tertiary guns 37 mm pom pom loaded, 4 fourths AA guns 0.303 maxim loaded, 1818 0.303 magazine Lee Enfield loaded. 08 Hydroplane catapults ready, 2 halves Requiem, LVL1, Memento Mori, LVL1, Lydite Train, LVL1, on activation, 10s reload for next salvo, the following salvo has 40s reload, can be activated every 40s, on activation, minus 5% chance of breakdown and flash fire. When this ship is hit by an attack that would otherwise sink it, 25% chance to completely heal this ship. Duration. Tens can be activated every 5 minutes. On activation, fires a salvo of helidite shells with higher chance to set fire on target and deal critical damage. Has 90% chance of critical malfunction. Uh. Consumables? Modernization pack. 100 platinum coins fire extinguisher 1 silver coin repair kit 1 silver coin technical inspection 1 gold coin upgrade point 10 gold coins i am very concerned about the chances of malfunction something tells me that i will be using my guns quite rarely especially considering their characteristics i wonder if one little fantasy cliche will happen and i will encounter a damsel in distress of course I might not be able to save everyone but considering my current firepower it should not be too hard. I began searching for my way out of the forest. When I found a small opening I launched a hydroplane. While well, right after launching the plane my catapult started smoking and sparking, the plane itself successfully flew away. With the eyes above I quickly will find a way out of the forest. Let the adventures of a noble lady begin. V2CH2 Country Road I slowly walked through the forest towards a landmark I found from above. I managed to find a large road which I can use to exit the forest but first things first I needed to reach my way out. Because I did not waste my time here I think that I will find the road before the night. No matter how much you like nature you will never want to sleep in a forest alone and without a gun. And also without a shelter which I can't make here. I never joined scouts neither I learned how to survive aside from watching some TV shows. While for an unknown reason I am not concerned with the forest I still feel uncomfortable. I can almost feel an urgent desire to drink some tea. Might be because I know about the Britons only that they drink tea and live somewhere on an island. Of course the majority of this is just my nonsense which I think to distract myself from the unfamiliar sounds and the falling night. I am not brave, I am a coward, I am not a hero, I might as well be called a low life, I was close to the road and when I finally walked in there I tried landing my hydroplane, when a huge monoplane with floats below its fuselage attempted landing, I almost screamed in terror, right before running into me it turned into a small toy sized plane and I tried catching it with my hand. I swiftly stretched out the hand and grabbed it before it had to climb back. Of course the catapult is still dead so I only placed the plane there. I had two ways, left and right. I decided to turn right and walk to the north. The night was approaching but I dared to walk even when the visibility became low. I walked on the moonlit dirt road somewhere in the middle of nowhere. When I was about to relax and enjoy the travel I felt how my heart stopped for a moment but continued beating right after skipping a couple of beats. Looks like my machinery already began reminding me of itself and reminding me that it is after all a good idea to rest tonight. I did not rest and continued walking. Might be a bad idea but I am willing to take the risk. The night is a time of predators. I heard sounds of beasts far away from me. 
I was worried if I will encounter any enemies and at last I saw a silhouette in front of me. I fired one of the Maxim MGs. Tra -ta -ta the things I saw fell down immediately while I hurried away before the thunder of gunfire attracted other curious creatures of night. The moon lit my path and after some time its light showed me an abandoned carriage. Whatever happened to it is not important because I decided to use it as my cover for the night. I spread out the cloak and right after I lied down I fell asleep. When I peeked out in search of any threats I confirmed that the sun is up and that the morning is going to be sunny and calm. I accelerated my steps and soon I left the carriage far away. On my way I walked into a stream and my urge to have a tea stop almost won me over. Yet I lacked tea leaves and knowledge how to make a fire. I was disappointed to leave the fresh water but I had to continue my way in hopes of finding a civilization and then having some tea. I did not map the forest or perform any air filming of the surroundings so I am unsure where I will arrive, or when. I am still worried about what to do with my heavy guns which reload in 10 minutes. Per shot. While I was busy with distracting myself from walking and worrying for unknown reasons, I heard something. I turned round and saw a carriage approaching. Soon it closed enough for me to talk to the coachman. What is such a beauty doing here all alone? Are you from the carriage back there? The coachman has a rough voice but he was not looking suspiciously. While I raised my guard a bit, I tried responding as gently as I can. Oh my, have you seen it? I might have stayed there for a bit longer and be saved. I chuckled and smiled with a pretty smile. As I expected when you are a hot gorgeous lady any man would be charmed in a moment. Smile and the world shall succumb to you. Looks like you might use some help. Am I right? For beautiful ladies my carriage is free. Well, it is not a passenger carriage but it is still better than walking. See? Thank you for the offer. I am much obliged. I used all of my noble phrases knowledge from novels and for now I appear to be successful. I entered the carriage and found a couple more people inside. Both are armed and armored. My first thought was that they are adventurers. Pardon the interruption. Are you perhaps adventurous? I had to interrupt them to ask. While well, they appeared to be irritated. The moment the two men looked at me I almost felt their gaze landing a bit below my neck and a bit above my waist. Might be that I need to repeat myself? I implied that I am waiting and only then two perverts dragged their gaze to my face. Yes we are, want to hear our stories? Please, go ahead. I smiled and prepared to listen to their bragging. HMS Delight has gloss re-entry. I suggest you visit it to have an idea about her alternative history history. V2CH3, noble bed I enjoyed shaking of the carriage and nonsense of the men I travelled with. The coachman said that we will need to keep riding for a few more days before we arrive to any settlement. I somehow ended up in the furthest place from civilization. I was excited for having someone to talk with. Even if the someone was constantly looking at me with an obvious desire to f. While normal ladies would be disgusted or scared to travel with this couple of low lives, I am much more understanding. Might be because I am a male myself. Well, while I enjoy having a well-armored ship, I am much more attracted to my braid of silky hair. Whenever I find myself tired I start caressing my hair and it makes me feel relaxed. If this continues I might even turn into hair con. When I closed my eyes for a short nap I discovered something interesting. Even with my eyes closed I was properly informed about my surroundings. I perfectly sensed what is going on around me, at least inside the carriage. And I perfectly sensed what is going on in the air. I even saw a something larger than a bird in a distance. It looked just like a disfigured mess but it is surely not a flock. My sweet dreaming abruptly ended when I felt a hand creeping towards me. Luckily I found it before I was groped. I decided to show them that I am not somebody they should mess around with. In a second I reached out for the stiletto and in a flash fast move I pointed the tip at the pervert's palm. A small drop of blood showed on the blade's tip. I might be patient. Yet it is improper to touch a lady like that. Please, keep your hand away from me. 
When the hand returned to its owner I returned the stiletto back. No hands followed nor interrupted my sleep. After I had my sleep and opened my eyes I saw no one inside the carriage. I peeked outside and saw that the two men were fighting wolves. They struggled to even keep the wolves away from themselves. Do you need help? I casually asked the men. I truly felt like humiliating them after they tried a very disrespectful thing. After my proclamation the men doubled their efforts to reclaim some of their pride. I almost wanted to make a sarcastic remark about it but then an ugly green small thing showed up. The men finished slaughtering the wolves but a goblin that showed up already called for its friends. I lazily looked around and was about to ask the men again. Keep your commentary to yourself, will you? I shrugged my shoulders and returned my head inside the carriage. Soon I heard terrified screams of the lechers. I was oh so worried that I even peeked again. The men were desperately trying to hold back the goblins. Right when I showed up the men almost cried for my help. I summoned the gear and started loading one of the four-inch guns. Okay. Just wait ten minutes until I can help you. I was not interested in their fate. They are low lives and I don't feel any fraternity with them. You. Come on, I offered my help. Twelve minutes ago? And now they started struggling like crazy. They barely survived for the ten minutes and now I was ready to blast some goblins. Bang my assumption that the gun will not be that inaccurate so as not to hit a target right in front of it ended up correct. The shell hit a group of goblins far enough and thus the perverts were not in danger. The goblins in front of them sucked up all the fragments. After the men cleaned up the remaining goblins I asked them. Now, tell me a good story about the two adventurers who bravely killed a wolf and a half. Our ride continues. After my rapid unplanned display of power I had to be even more careful. The adventurers were playful before seeing my power but now they are surely looking at me with mistrust. They tried to sit as far away from me as they could which confirms my suspicions. I am so happy that they don't pester me. Yet I'd like them not tell anybody about what happened. Considering that I have a lot of spare time and no desire to rush things. I grabbed a couple of bags with something bulk goods and used them for a makeshift bed. Well, I am supposed to be a noble girl who enjoys comfort. Sleeping on a bench is not comfortable at all. Just when I was about to enter the realm of dreamland I heard something going on outside and the next moment the carriage began stopping. Stop the carriage now, otherwise you will be in a great trouble. The carriage did stop already. You moron. V2CH4. The grand ambush I was not amused by the sudden delay of my arrival to civilization which is why I looked at the hesitating men and used my charm. Could you go outside and find out what is going on? It was not a request but an order. Considering that neither of them was in a position to argue with me they dragged themselves outside. I could not hear the words from outside but I did not worry. If something was to happen I'd happily remind the intruders of that I am not a sheltered noble lady. I am just a sheltered modern person, not that it is different. I heard some fuss and a couple of seconds later one of the men stuck his head inside the carriage. If you want to deal with it then go out yourself. I slowly crawled out of my quiet corner in the bags and stepped outside of the carriage. I walked around the corner and saw two people in hoods. One person was high and brawny while the other was small and confirmed female. I'd say that what I can see below the cloak is impressive. Right while I was approaching them my own impressive stuff affected my center of mass and I started falling. I barely managed to support myself by holding on to the carriage. When I looked at the cloaked people I saw that the brawny guy was a meter away from me. It appears that he tried supporting me when I started falling. I like such treatment, I immediately corrected my posture and tried displaying an arrogant young lady whom you should never cross path with. You too. How dare you stop me? Who do you think you are? In reality my high-pitched voice and arrogant manners were almost completely broken by my innate reflexes and calm voice. Instead of a villain's tantrum I have a weird mismatched phrase to which everyone try their best to suppress laughter. Indeed. Forgive my unworthy display. Still, might I know the reason you stopped us? 
I corrected myself and returned everyone's attention to the issue we faced. When the brawny guy was about to answer, the girl patted his shoulders, that's what she tried to do but could not reach, and talked in his stead. Please, we are sorry for this but we were separated from the rest of our companions. Miss, can we please go with you, at least to a nearby village? The girl directed her plea at me yet I am not the one in charge of this carriage. Our lady would not mind it, please, feel free to enter. The coachman immediately invited them and thus avoided an embarrassment which I created. The five of us entered the carriage. The adventurers turned their attention to the bigger prize while I was making my way to my nest. When I finally was able to face the others I saw the adventurers who started whispering about the obvious thing, the brawny guy who just sat near the girl to shield her from an unwanted attention, and the girl who was looking at me with scarlet face. Considering all vectors and angles I have no doubt she liked my choice of clothes. Could you not look at me like that? I gently reminded her that she is too obvious. Sorry. Ha ha. She turned her head away but kept glancing from time to time. When I finally made myself comfortable I asked our new companions about how they ended up here. I was. Well, hunting monsters. And after we were done and headed back. Our carriage was struck by something and was broken so we had to walk. In the exact moment the adventurers looked at me with suspicion. Oh my! I wonder if there are people remaining in the forest. No. There were only two of us. Sorry for the question but how did you end up here? The girl's curiosity made Agent 059 face the worst odds in her entire life. Traveled here. As you can guess. I used my charm to its maximum. The girl appears to have trusted my words. After that I returned to my time warp, the so-called sleep. When I waked up again I saw the girl lying nearby. I looked at her companion who lightly waved at me. The girl looked like she was actually enjoying her sleep so I decided to let her be. It would be a shame to interrupt her daydream. I cautiously squeezed out of there and peeked outside of the carriage. While I was expecting to see the daylight I actually saw that it was night. The carriage was standing and to its left was a campfire. I saw the coachman and when he felt my gaze he turned to me. Oh, milady, You woke up? Called the others. It is time to eat. I hope you like some roasted hair. See? Of course. A moment, please. The men already queued for exit while I made my way to my bedding to wake up the girl. I carefully shook her shoulder and she opened her eyes. And miss, good. Morning Tilda? She almost jumped up when she saw me. The water bottles jumped as well and bounced a bit. How about you get out of here? The coachman cooked some meat. I offered her my hand and the girl blushed. However, she could not resist my smile and accepted my hand. Soon we all sat down and started eating. The adventurers began bragging how great they are and the girl trustingly listened to their nonsense. A few minutes later the brawny guy yawned and lied down on the grass. The girl also looked sleepy, yet she woke up less than an hour ago. I pretended to be sleepy as well and almost simultaneously with the girl I lied down. They're good, boss. Let's take them away from here. V2CH5. A birdcage it was surprising to find out that I was about to be kidnapped. I might have believed that the two adventurers can do this but my vigilance surely was lowered for the coachman. I cautiously peeped. The coachman carried the girl, while one of the adventurers picked up her companion. The other pervert tried lifting me but could not. This is not because I am fat, mind you. S. Her B weight a lot. He almost groped me but his friend reminded him. If you touch her B before me, I'll break a couple of your bones. Take her and let's go. She's F heavy. I can't lift her. Meanwhile, I found a weird setting real mass which is turned on. I already have a good idea how to use it. The lecherous duet stopped quarreling and the second adventurer approached me. Are you F joking? He lifted me up with no issues, but I'm serious, man. She was heavier than a F bear. I was returned to the ground and the first bastard tried lifting me up. Ha 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 ha. 
His friend looked at him struggling and instead of helping was just laughing his lungs out at this scene. They switched a couple of times until the second man started rolling on the ground and laughing. Even the coachman was laughing hard at the poor bastard. Of course, the one who was laughed at soon erupted. All three of them started talking with their fists and soon it turned into free-for-all. While they were beating each other I only regretted not having popcorn. Soon they were done beating each other and returned to the problem of having to carry me. I was carried further than the carriage was parked. It took around 10 minutes to reach another carriage, filled not with grain but with cages. After the guards left I looked around. There were more than a dozen of cages but only three were occupied. Some of the cages were reinforced with additional metal but mine was even more extraordinary. It was fully made of thick metal tubes and might even be used to contain a bear. Perhaps my show-off really made them worried about my abilities. I decided to wait for what will happen next. The kidnappers did not show up until the morning and I was getting bored of the waiting. Right when they showed up I waved them and smiled. Their faces were priceless. What are you smiling at? They were a bit confused that I was smiling while I was locked. Do you think this much is enough to save you Tilda? I decided to make them understand that the cage is not to lock me away from them but to lock them away from me. Ha ha, if you think you can get out of here, then be my guest. The coachman turned from a gentleman into a lustful piece of a swine. Funny thing, they did not take away my stiletto. Ping I used the stiletto as a punch and made a large hole in the lock. The faces of the men turn pale. I stay here only because I am bored Tilda. The poor bastards were white from fear. Meanwhile, the other two woke up. Where are we? What happened? The poor girl started crying. Calm down. They can't do anything. As long as they behave Tilda. I winked at the men and they stepped back. Right after I lost interest they ran away. If you won't return in one hour, then you might as well start digging your own graves. I shouted at their backs. While it was funny to bully the bullies, I needed to calm down the other captives. What happened? The girl stopped crying. In short, you were drugged and carried here. The girl's eyes widened in shock, and how can you know it? A deep female voice asked me. Now it was my turn to stare in shock. Don't you look at me like that. It is your fault we ended up here. The escort continued accusing me for whatever reason. I might as well open the lock and make my way out of here. I showed them the pierced lock. Then do it. Yes, right. Leave us here. What an honorable deed. The bad mouthing continued and I was on the brink of actually doing that. Shut up. Gee, my lady. How can you blame the miss if you too fail to do anything? The girl was going on a rampage. Oh my. This is getting tiresome. I tried to find a somewhat comfortable pose to take a nap. Considering that I know no other ways to skip time I can only sleep here. My lady. Just look at her. If she was actually capable of anything she would already free us. The brawny kept acting on my nerves. Please, miss. Can you open the cages? The girl pleaded me. I should not. My lady. I am sure she is working with the kidnappers. My patience was at zero. Miss, can you pee please explain why? Gee, if we just run away, won't the kidnappers just capture other people? When they return I have no doubt they will bring something else to assist them. Do you see where I am going? Brilliant. I will just have to protect two ladies. The escort was just beating her head against the bars. All right, ladies, shall we wait for them? Or you want to try escaping by yourself? Oh my. Is that a side story? No 30. Final. The big school needs big guns. The waves in the harbor calmed down. A lot of citizens gathered at the port to look at a large crustacean which appeared on the horizon. I made the last checks of the distance using rangefinders. Will you be able to stop it? Everyone looked at me with worry. If I could not, would I be worthy of bearing the royal flag? The gun barrels were slowly rising from loading position to their firing position. 
I made final corrections and fired. Boom 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 the shells narrowly missed the target but the follow ups were already sent. I made corrections and scored several hits right in the monster's face. It was not happy but it received no visible damage. Boom 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 I scored more and more hits but no damage was done, even from visual range. Meanwhile, I prepared to send torpedoes. Splash. Splash six torpedoes are in the water. I sent them with the tightest spread yet only one hit the crab's leg but dealt no damage. I was getting restless. Considering that I have not too much spare time I have to find out a good way to make the monster die fast. My shells are too light to mash its insides. Wait, too light? Mr. Light? No other ways around it, ha? Huh? Well, then, you have forced me to do it, my good delicacy. For the eternal glory of the Royal Navy. The 14-inch gun turrets turned into much bigger, massive turrets with wide and heavy guns. The turrets slowly turned at the target and I prepared to open fire. Kaboom! One of the 18-inch guns opened fire. A terrifying might of its gases shattered some of the rock of the waterfront. It was only a glancing hit but I have seven more of those. Kaboom! Hit! The crab's armor was pierced and the shell exploded inside. The monster raised a howl of pain. Kaboom 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 I continued firing one gun at a time. With each shot I was pushed back a few centimeters. With each shot the harbor's bottom was uncovered. With each shot more and more stone was shattered. Kaboom 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 the terrifying shots destroyed the monster's shell and soon it fell into the water. The monster stopped moving which made the crowd raise a cry of victory. After that Delight became the national hero and received a mansion and noble title. She also received an honor of having the harbor expanded to house her huge battle cruiser body. Whenever an enemy approaches the capital, the main guns make any enemy consider negotiations and peace. Because of her constant interference the world became much more peaceful. She bring peace through big guns. V2CH6 Silent escape hit did not take the kidnappers a lot of time to return with backup. Hello. Are you really thinking that you can run away that easily? The coachman was looking at me with even more disgusting face. There were more than 20 people all armed and ready to fight against me. Calm them down. The coachman ordered a bald man something. The man started murmuring something and the two girls fell asleep. What the hell? While I was wondering what happened, the man cried out in disbelief. When I turned my head at them they stepped back with pale faces. I summoned the gear and began loading the main guns. For an unknown reason there were no malfunctions and the gun safely and successfully loaded. For an even more enigmatic reasons the band of kidnappers did not run away. I aimed the guns and prepared to open fire. Will you be good guys and release us? Don't forget to surrender yourselves to the police. I gave them my final warning. Go to hell, you can't defeat all twenty of us. Boom I fired the first blank and it destroyed the cage. Now the fun begins. The kidnappers ran at me but that was even better for me. I fired another shot. The shock wave torn apart most of them and only few of them survived. They started running or crawling away but this time I decided to keep no witnesses. Boom boom in the end we have only me and the other two captives. I regret my fury but I doubt that any of these bastards would repent their actions. For now I need to go away from here before anyone shows up. While I was alone I checked the stats. Ding you received 9 upgrade points, 440 QFM K3, replaces SG. 1.8540 QFM K2, replaces TG, 0.562 MK3, replaces small caliber Ray A, 11 copper coins, 1 skill point, 5 repair kits, 4 fire extinguishers, 0.562 MK3, replaces medium caliber Ray A, 1225 MKV, replaces MG. 0.303 Maxim, replaces Defense MGs, 37mm Bomb Bomb, replaces Medium Caliber Ray A, what a bountiful harvest, HMS Delight, BC, Mod 1890 1920, Modernization Progress 6 tenths, Accuracy, 
2 one hundredths reload, 3 one hundredths recoil, 1 one hundredth machinery 99 25 guns, 99 25 equipment, 99 25 main guns 12 25 MKV loaded, 4 eighths fire at 0 0.1 0.5 range minus 8.5 kilometers secondary guns 440 QFMK3 loaded 0 06 fire at 0 2 eighths range minus 8.5 kilometers tertiary guns 1.8540 QFMK2 loaded 0 04 fire at 0 0.620 AA guns 37 millimeters pom pom Loaded 8 eighths, 0 0.562 MK3. Loaded 10 tenths, 0 0.303 Maxim. Loaded 8 eighths, Requiem, LVL1, Memento Mori, LVL2, Lydite Train, LVL1. On activation, tens reload for next salvo. The following salvo has 40s reload. Can be activated every 40s. On activation. Minus 10% chance of breakdown and flash fire. When this ship is hit by an attack that would otherwise sink it, 25% chance to completely heal this ship. Duration. Tens can be activated every 5 minutes. On activation, fires a salvo of helidite shells with higher chance to set fire on target and deal critical damage. Has 90% chance of critical malfunction. I broke the locks of the other cages and princess carried the brawny girl. On top of her I placed her companion. And then I vanished from the crime scene. The girls were quite light and I was not tired even after an entire hour of carrying them and walking. By the noon I was far away from the carriages. Only then did I remember that I could have just taken the horses and avoid having to walk. Just why am I such a cheese head? It was too late to return so I continued walking in the direction I expected the civilization will be. Soon I walked into a cliff and I am on the lower side of it. I might be stronger than a common human but I am sure that I can't just climb there with two people in my hands. Neither I can risk dragging them upwards on a rope. I placed them on the ground and spent some time trying to find a bypass of this trial but I found that there are even worse cliffs around. In the end I decided to try climbing after the girls wake up. They woke up only in the evening. I was sitting by a bonfire and ate a meal from my lunch box. This was an unexpectedly good food. What? Hey, where are we? The bad mouthed girl woke up and immediately jumped up. Good evening. I suggest you not rise so fast, might end up with a headache. She already started experiencing a headache so instead of shouting around she returned to the ground. Have we escaped? Miss, are we really safe? The good girl was nervously looking around. We have. The kidnappers will never return. From the dead? Suddenly, the bad mouth relaxed. Now that you both woke up, look there at the cliff and understand that we will have to climb it. I found no ways around so we are stuck here for tonight. I lazily stirred the coals. Thank you so much for saving us. Come on. Thank her. The girl was actively talking. It was nothing. You are always welcome Tilda. After I made sure they are fine I prepared to sleep after the eventful day. Why are you sleeping so much? The bad mouthed girl asked me with scorn. Because I was looking after you for two days? I think I deserve some rest. With this I calmly took my nap. V2CH7 Night vs Battle Cruiser The next morning I was fresh and mentally prepared to conquer the cliff. The other girls were not sleepy which was not surprising, considering that they had a lot of time to sleep while I was fleeing, they were sitting around the burned out fireplace and chatted. Good morning. Have you encountered any problems this night? No, which is surprising. I thought you are going to bring us even more troubles than we are not prepared to face. The brawny girl dislikes me but I couldn't care less. Thank you for your care. Sorry, uh. I don't know your name. The good girl blushed a bit when she reminded me of my grave mistake. Oh my, what an embarrassment. Forgive my rudeness, I am delight. Pleased to make an acquaintance. 
When I started saying my name, I automatically did a curtsy. I'm Lily, please, take care of me. This grumbler is my knight. Say hello. When Lilith looked at her companion she lowered her voice and sounded quite intimidating. Xera, take care of me. Not that I can trust you. If she did not have such a friendly attitude I might have considered her just to be dear. yet there was no deal. Stop looking at me like that and spit out what you planned. You said that we will climb the damned cliff, or you've forgotten? X. I picked up a rope I do requisitioned from the kidnappers and without asking anything bound the girls, I made a simple chain where I am in front, Lilith in the middle and Xera is an anchor which will be hitting the cliff if something goes wrong, I approached the cliff and tried climbing, it did not go well, hey, Dumba, go away, if you will be climbing then we might as well hope that somebody will come and lift us there, I know that I am not a mountaineer but you could have phrased it in another way, don't take it personally, she has a sharp tongue. Lilith patted my shoulder and tried comforting me. Well, I was considering using a bit of my mass to remind that damned. Are you going to remain there forever? Xera shouted from above. She already climbed half of the cliff. I did not interfere and a minute later I was lifted there like a sausage. I bet I looked funny with my arms crossed and grumpy expression on my face. After that we continued going forward. I was the vanguard because of my strength. In terms of raw power I have 150 000 horsepower engine so I am incomparable with the knight. Speak of whom, she was guarding Lilith from me not from anything in the forest. I wanted to remind her that I am less of a problem than the dense vegetation around us but in the end I just kept silence. It did not take us long to walk into a problem. A swamp was in our way and I had no idea what can be lurking inside the dirty waters. I stepped on the murky water and did not fall. Perhaps because I am a ship I can safely traverse the waters of this swamp. Lily, come here. I will carry you. Wait a moment. Why you? You are a walking troublemaker. X. I should remind you that all of the problems began after you showed up. Am I really a troublemaker? Especially considering that I am trying to help and you hinder me. How about we all calm down and take a deep breath? L. It was too late. Neither I nor Xera were ready to step back. If you don't like something then go away. X. I can. Will you survive without any weapons and food is the other question. Ha! Do you think a sheltered noble can survive better than a knight? Don't make me laugh. X, try me, knight. I doubt that you will even scratch me. I won't let you go away. Xera ran at me. When she was in a meter, something exploded between us. Can you both stop this? Lilith was standing in a weird pose with her hands stretched out in the direction an explosion happened. When I looked at the ground below I saw ice and a ball of snow. Impressive, it is a commendable attack. I complimented her. It. It was nothing. My seniors are much better. Lilith was swinging around her arms to hide her embarrassment. Well, I did see you so why should I commend your superiors who did nothing? I giggled. This is not over. Xera turned her back at me and stomped away. If you want to follow us, then I will leave a stick to guide you. I checked my inner compass, took Lilith in my hands and sailed away. Pong in the middle of the swamp I picked a signal. It sounded like a sonar beep. Lily, are there any monsters in swamps? Why are you? Don't tell me. She shivered. Bong, bong. Pong V2 CH8 Fishing with explosives I wonder if I am really a magnet for troubles. Sonar contact was approaching, for now it circled around and searched for an opening. It did not scare me but if I end up in its mouth then Lilith whom I carry will not be as fine as me. I'd pay everything to have a depth charge to throw at the monster but I have to fight with what I have. I tried launching what I have, torpedoes. Splash what happened? Lilith was trembling. 
I patted her back and continued tracking the monster. All three torpedoes missed and I prepared for the second launch. Splash when the first and the second torpedoes missed I was ready to run away but then I had my ears bleed. Kaboom a bubble appeared on the surface which was worth the ear I suffered. The monster started surfacing. Crow a huge catfish with a large wound on its right side surfaced and headed at me. By that time I was ready to meet it with a stiletto. I did not load the guns because it would be worse for me if something goes wrong. Lilith started chanting something and after she stretched out her hands a blue bolt of electricity hit the catfish. While it was stunned I had to decide fight or flight dilemma. Too I accelerated from the spot and left a large splash of water behind. Lilith cried out in fear but I did not pay attention. I accelerated to the maximum speed and steamed away from the accursed fish. Soon my heart started skipping beats but I continued at the same speed. The catfish disappeared from the sonar yet I was not sure if it was alone and if it will follow us. Ground. Look, there is some ground. Lilith cried out in relief and pointed at a small island. I am surely not in the best of my condition which is why I steamed to the island without asking a question. After I put Lily down I almost fell from the pain. When I checked the details I saw a message that one of the boilers was damaged. Because I had a repair kit I used it to fix the boiler. When I was fixed I stepped on the water and ping, 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 damn it, why would it follow us? Torpedoes were already reloaded but just in case I loaded the secondary and tertiary guns. After I was prepared I sailed into the swamp. This time the enemy was not approaching me that rashly and when I dropped a stone just for a test, the catfish changed its direction. I set the maximum spread for the torpedo launches and prepared. After a lot of stones I found a pattern the monster uses and launched torpedoes. Splash the fact that I suffered another ear bleeding confirms that the catfish is not happy as well. Splash one more hit. But this time I was really thinking that I will need my ears fixed. I was completely dumbfounded that the damned fish did not die after three torpedo hits. I doubt I would survive that many. When the monster surfaced I clearly saw that it was on the brink of death but it valiantly charged. I opened fire with everything I have. I only scored one 4 inch hit and a small number of machine gun hits. Because of the grave damage the catfish received it was already on the death's doorstep. So after a little bit of help it was sent to the heavens. I successfully returned to pick up Lilith who was staring at me dumbfounded. Are you a sage? She asked me with an abstracted look. Oh no, I am but a humble traveler. I denied that. What a powerful magic. Can you teach me how to cast it? She fired up and now I could only sigh. This is not a magic I could teach you. Instead of asking the others for teaching you, you should learn how to do that by yourself. She did not look convinced so I continued my motivation training. There can never be enough teachers for all of the willing. While it is possible to show some tricks, in the end learning the tricks depends not on the one who is teaching but on the one who is learning. This time her eyes lit up in anticipation so I guess my motivation training had some success. For now I need to focus on getting us out of here before any more catfish monsters show up. I can think about how to deny that I am a mage at a later date. I picked Lilith up and steamed at a slower speed. We were crossing the swamp for a lot of time but in the end I managed to find some dry land, which is the end of the damned swamp. Now we just need to wait when the night will show up. We walked away from the dirty water and were walking up a hill to set up a campfire. When we reached the top, hello there. What's up with that face of yours? Xera was already there and began acting on my nerves. V2CH9. Searching a new way out it was a complete mystery how the damned gorilla made it through the swamp earlier than we did, earlier than me who steamed at 30 plus knots. My brain just couldn't process it. Xera, how is it possible? Lilith also was confused. If you did think with your empty heads, you might have saw that there is road nearby. Bulls. I am sure that we steamed in one direction without turning. And I am sure that even if she ran, even if she flew, 
She couldn't have arrived faster than we did. Check it yourself. She shrugged her shoulders. I did go the way she showed, and oh f. There is a road. Now the question is how, Xera, why don't you explain it properly? Lilith was as convinced as was I and thus she began shaking the bad-mouthed liar. Fine, my lady, do you remember that you gave me some reward for my hard work? I spent it to buy a scroll. I bought a random scroll but I received one with teleportation. Cheetah, cheetah. Lilith has the same opinion as me. Considering that we have no other things to do I change the topic. Is everyone alright? Can you continue going? We should hurry and find an open space before the night. I did not feel tired but I should mind the others. I'm fine. X, I did not ask you. Wanna continue from where we ended? She showed her fists. I am a bit tired. Miss Delight. Can you carry me like you did before? You are warmer than. She gave her knight a meaningful look. The trust she shows me truly made me smile. Don't be too happy. Lady just doesn't want you to feel useless. X. I picked up Lilith but instead of lying in my arms and being princess carried around she hugged my neck which made four planets collide and form an exciting new something. My lady, do you not see this pervert's face? She gives me creeps just by standing there. I think you better not to approach her. I was already at my limit. What is it? Xera, you are jealous that she is much more feminine than you are? Lilith retributed in my stead. This round is mine. I walked forward with a girl in my hands. I wonder why I don't feel anything. If I was to carry a cute girl in my arms, and if I was in direct contact with such big breasts, I would have died of nosebleed. Perhaps I became girl even in my heart? But when? Xera was not interfering so I had no further quarrel with her. I only should concentrate on the road. Hey, do you hate her? Lilith murmured something. I wonder why this person is so rude. Yeah, you are really angry. She is not that bad, she is just overprotective. L, she keeps fighting me, I don't see overprotective here. I too have my limits. I'll talk to her, she should stop acting like that. L, I did not answer her anything and just continued walking. The night is approaching and I can feel an eerie presence. I wonder if it will be alright if we stay in the forest. I want to send a hydroplane but I doubt that I can explain it. We did not walk into the road by the nightfall and now we had to set up a campfire in a complete darkness. I was whistling while the girls were trying to ignite a bird nest. I don't whistle just for the sake of amusement. It should scare off some fauna. The girls managed to ignite a fire but I still doubt that it will be enough to scare off anything. I volunteered to guard them because I am not tired. When they fell asleep and stopped being on alert I lit up spotlights. Unlike a puny campfire they made, these spotlights easily break through the dense vegetation of the forest. I only needed to move the beams around to scare away any threats. The night was passing uneventfully. Whenever animals dried approaching I scared them away by lighting up their whereabouts. Soon the sun will rise and we will continue going somewhere. I think that the girls should now be fine so I walked away. For some time I heard a sound of water and I decided to check out what is there. When I walked out to a coast I confirmed that there is a small river. Well, small is a word for a 70 meter wide river. Why do I need it? You ooh you ooh a scout plane managed to take off without a catapult. I decided not to risk launching it myself and used the river as an airstrip. For some time the plane did not spot anything but trees so I tried sending it in other directions, again and again. There was nothing. In a couple of hours the sun will rise but I still was yet to find a road. I ordered the hydroplane to return and land. Even on its way back the plane found nothing but trees. The plane already approached the river and started descending. It touched the water and began slowing down. The plane overshot and after it landed it had to swim back to me. When it stopped near me it became small and I picked it up. With the recon finished I hurried to return. By the time I return the others have woken up. Where have you been? Lilith was looking at me with contempt but for now I should report the discovery. 
I scouted a bit but I found no roads nearby, do you have any ideas where can we go? If there was a river nearby we'd go down the current and walk into a village. When Xera said that I felt like an idiot follow me. I looked at them and with shame reported about the river V2CH10 a village in distress we walked on the river's coast. I wondered if we will actually be able to walk into a village or any house. I already feel that all of my life force was squeezed out these days. I barely can think of anything but tea. If this goes on I might turn into a mad woman and start chasing after Xera with a spear while thinking that she is a teal for a teapot. Are you not good? Xera broke off a large branch, or better say a log. I took the stiletto. Can you cover my back? X, keep them at distance and I will deal with the ones who are close. The thought to just leave her here and run away with Lilith also visited my brain but I doubt that Lilith won't hold a grudge against me if I just abandon the ungrateful knight. A group of wolves appeared but they looked. Weird. There is a horn on their heads. Storm wolves. Xera murmured something. Before I made a unicorn or a rhinoceros joke. One of the wolves rushed at us but Xera hit it with her log. I stood on the same spot to give her back up. The other wolves tried surrounding us but I was ready to attack them as well. Soon another daring wolf attacked and managed to bite me. Judging by its painful expression it broke some of its teeth. Another wolf tried to aim for my neck but its howl of pain made the other beasts understand that I am much harder target than they expected. Meanwhile. Xera was protecting Lilith who got caught between our backs. Every storm wolf that dared jumping at Xera was launched like with a baseball bat. I decided to show off how great and cool I am and leapt at the wolves who grouped in front of the softer but tenderness target. I stabbed each wolf in a matter of seconds and by the time the first wolf fell down I finished stabbing the last of them. Well. I stabbed four wolves. There were that many. Show off. If you could have done that then why did you wait? X. You are welcome. I turned away and continued down the current. The tension between us was growing. Well, tension between me and Xera to be exact. I wanted to finally escape and relax without having to talk to her. It would be even better if I could just part my ways with her and never remember. While I was deep in my thoughts I picked up something on one of my radars. It was a repeating movement somewhere above the ground. I hurried there. Where are you running? Hey. I can't keep up. Lilith was calling from behind. I looked back at her and oh my. In a minute she caught up with me. Ha. 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 Why. Were. You. Running. She was trying to catch her breath. I saw something in front. It might be related to the civilization. Yes, great. Remember that you are not alone here. X. I remembered that and did not run again. In a few hundred meters the river was turning and when we walked around the trees that blocked the view something showed up. Is that a windmill? Yes. We finally found a village. Lilith was happy and even Xera smiled. Soon we approached the windmill and as it turns out, the windmill is not abandoned. There are no people inside but if we follow a trail we should find a village. We hurried up and in 10 minutes a group of buildings appeared in front of us. I wanted to lie down in a bed as soon as possible. When we finally arrived to the village we saw no one. There were no people, not a single soul. What the hell? Where did all those people disappear? X, I approached a door and tried opening it. The door was closed. I applied a bit of a force to it and opened it with my leg. The door fell down. No. A shout came out of inside and I rushed in. Inside of the house I saw a family. Each of the people was holding a knife, a pitchfork or something like that. The people looked at me in terror but soon they calmed down a bit. What happened? Lilith and Xera rushed in as well. Indeed. Can you explain what happened to the village? I asked the family. Why yes, my lady. The village is frequently attacked by a band of orcs. They steal our cattle, are our women and kill everyone whom they can't take. We asked for help but nobody came. The explanation soon turned into a plea. 
Do you have any swords? I am one of the Rose Knights and can help you. Xera stepped forward. Yes, yes, thank you. The family was moved to tears. By the time we walked out of the house the villagers all swarmed to the house. Dear people, you can calm down. We might not look much but we will be able to help you. Can you find a couple of good swords and some potions? The swords are for Xera while the potions are my guess. If they can help her then it is good. Yes, right, I want her to succeed. I don't want to risk blowing up just to help her. The villagers brought a somewhat good sword and one eaten by rust. There are some health potions and an entire cup worth of mana potions. Lilith was in delight when she was presented a mana potion. I want to make sure that we can meet the orcs before they reach the village so I walked a bit away from it. That is when I saw a group of people on a hill. A side story of darkness and a cat no one. Drift cat the last thing I remember is a mine. When I opened my eyes, I found myself somewhere on a ground. I can't confirm that it is near a coastline, which means that I was taken here by someone. I jumped up and put a hand on the handle. If I am taken hostage then the enemy made a grave mistake of leaving the weapon in my possession. Four and a half minutes have passed but no one came. I started checking out the surroundings. No signs of people. Good. I looked at my clothes to check for clues or damage. The same sailor school uniform my seniors made me wear. Black vest with white collar and white shirt. Clothes, check. Weapons, metal rustle, click check. Situation unknown. As one wise person would say, enacting search protocol or something similar. I feel bad for not being able to suppress my emotions well enough. It is a good time to leave this area. I made a small landmark in case someone will search for me. If it is an enemy then I will kill them. If it is an ally then I will rejoin the original unit and continue to fulfill my duties. There is no third option. I am in a forest. The dense vegetation and shadows make me feel at ease. Yet I should prepare myself for a situation where I have to act in an open. I ran to the north. Soon I ran into an edge of the forest and made myself a shelter for the daytime. When the night falls I will move out and perform a reconnaissance. If everything is good I will continue moving. For now. This hot air is making me. Sleepy. V2CH11. Zero days without issues on a nearby hill I saw a group of people. They were watching me with interest. I suspected them to be the infamous orcs and measured the distance using my rangefinders. The people soon began walking in my direction to which I took out the stiletto and prepared to fight. They shouted, we are not enemies, we are adventurers who took the quest to save this village. I sighed out in relief and walked to greet them. Oh s, noble. And I thought why their reward is so high. Greetings, you are adventurers, correct? I find it funny that we arrived here at the same day. I decided to calm them down and show that I have nothing to do with the quest. If they dislike nobles then I am already not in the best position so it would be better to let the villagers handle them. Are you not the contractor? One of the adventurers asked with suspicion. No, I am but a wild girl who walked out of the forest. Jokes aside. I really walked into this village and found out about its problems only by accident. And no, I have no relation to this village whatsoever. The group of adventurers consists of seven men, all are well equipped and ready to fight the menace. I don't doubt their capabilities, yet I wonder if my help will not be necessary. After the adventurers learnt that I am not the one who they should talk to, they immediately made their way to the villagers without even glancing at me even more. I decided to find out how do I aim at something that is not in my line of sight. I summoned my gear and aimed the guns further than my line of sight. Immediately my vision changed into the bird's eye vision of the area with some sort of a naming reticle and data sheet where I saw information about range, speed and suggested corrections. Everything outside of my vision was covered in a fog of war but what was within radar vision was still visible. I saw birds flying around and when the other birds were flying into my radar vision they began appearing out of nowhere. I guess that is why I require the hydroplanes. 
For now I return to the village. The adventurers were discussing something with the villagers. Xera was sharpening the swords she received, and Lilith was just wandering around aimlessly. Considering that I am too just going to wander around I checked my stats to see if I can improve something. Ding new achievement, healed the king of a swamp you received 1 gold coin, 4 skill points, 8 copper coins, 1235 mk8, replaces mg, 2 upgrade points, 6 modernizations hms delight, bc, mod 1910 1930, modernization progress 2 tenths, accuracy, 2 one hundredths reload, 5 one hundredths recoil, 1 one hundredth machinery, 9925 guns, 9925 equipment, 9925, main guns 1235 mk8, loaded, 08, fire at, 0 0.10.86, range minus 13.5 kilometers, secondary guns 440 qf mk3, loaded, 06, fire at, 0. 4 eighths range minus 8.5 kilometers tertiary guns 1.8540 qfmk2 loaded 04 fire at 120 aa guns 37 millimeters pom pom loaded 8 eighths 0 0.562 mk3 loaded 10 tenths 0 0.303 maxim loaded 8 eighths requiem lvl1 Memento Mori, LVL6, Lydite Train, LVL1, on activation, 10s reload for next salvo, the following salvo has 40s reload, can be activated every 40s, on activation, minus 25% chance of breakdown and flash fire, when this ship is hit by an attack that would otherwise sink it, 25% chance to completely heal this ship, duration. 15s can be activated every 5 minutes. On activation, fires a salvo of helidite shells with higher chance to set fire on target and deal critical damage. Has 90% chance of critical malfunction. While I have nothing to do I decided to try making myself useful. I headed to the river to silently launch a hydroplane. This time I risked a catapult launch. And the plane was launched right into the river. I love those malfunctions. Instead of grieving my disastrous launch I launched another plane, using the river this time. Soon the plane began searching around the area and found trails which might belong to the orcs. The orcs lack Daka so they must be weak. Soon I found their settlement and even from above I can confirm that these guys are not friendly to the mankind. One more reason to test out my guns. I began a painfully slow process of loading the new guns. Ten minutes later, two gun turrets suffered from hydraulics malfunction, one had a fire breaking out and one, miraculously, finished loading and had its guns raised to open fire, all right, come what may. I will try firing at the orcs with 2% chance to hit anything, boom boom I fixed my eyes on the orcs settlement. One minute, two minutes, yes, a complete miss, I wonder why I am so unlucky. For now I need to get out of here before anyone arrives to check what happened here. V2CH12 Fighting the vanguard a few hours passed without anything of a note. The adventurers are greedy a who want money before they do something. Xera was still sharpening the swords and I was taking a stroll with Lily. I doubted that the orcs would dare attacking right now. They must have heard the shells exploding and should be more cautious. I did not risk firing my guns again so I will have to fight with the stiletto, or just leave fighting to the ones who actually know how to fight. The sun was setting when my poor unfueled hydroplane reported something moving outside the village. It was a large group of orcs, might as well be called an army. They had banners, a large amount of troops and even some siege engines. I felt concerned about the number of enemies and immediately reported my observation. What do you mean the orcs are coming? Hey, girl, you were in this village all the time. Do you understand that we are not going to be fighting with shadows? Neither of the adventurers believed me. I get that she is a troublemaker but if she thinks she saw something we should at least check it out. Suddenly, 
Sarah tried persuading them to check out about the orcs. Fine. I'll go and look for what you saw, damned cowardly nobles. The moment they hear a rat they start shouting dragon. One of the adventurers walked out into the darkness. I followed him and loaded secondary and tertiary guns, just in case. By the time I caught up, he was already fighting with a couple of orcs from their vanguard. While the adventurer was keeping the swine-faced monsters busy, I got behind their backs and with a couple of precise stabs calmed them down. In the distance I already saw a large group of orcs approaching. What the hell? The man was still shaken. Instead of crying here, go call the others. I will handle them while everyone's preparing. Understood, may the god bless you. Those were not their main forces but I can still claim that there are a few hundred of orcs. I opened fire with everything but main guns. This is only to suppress the enemy and give the others enough time to prepare. If I hit something then those are only lucky shots which somehow did not flew in the air or dug into the ground. It was not yet time for the trump card. The orcs were approaching rapidly but it is not going to actually help them. The closer they were the higher are the chances that the shots hit something. The four inch guns were already accurate enough to cause minor casualties. The same for machine guns. I can only fire everything and ignore the accuracy and recoil which scatters the ammo around the area. Soon I judge that it is a good time to retreat. I used my speed as my advantage and easily ran away. On my way I reported that the enemy force is only a vanguard and headed to the river to finally let my poor plane land and to try bombing the enemy tides with heavy guns. While I was loading the guns I had two of the turrets stop loading due to a malfunction. One had its loaders jam and bang an entire F explosion in the fourth turret while I was doing bad. The others forced the orc vanguard into a stalemate. Considering that I am currently useless I decided to head to the front lines and use my stiletto to do something. At least thus I will be useful. By the time I arrived the others managed to force the orcs to retreat and now they were about to face the main tide of their army. Considering that the enemy has much more forces than we do I did not hold back firing and used the weapons that do not explode into my face. I was not surprised that nothing hit the enemy but the orcs were somewhat confused by the explosions and the loud noise of gunfire. The adventurers were confused but they were more focused on fighting. Xera did not flinch and was keeping a steady posture waiting for the enemy to approach. Lilith was the only one who was used to the firing and thus did not lose her concentration. Her simple spells were effective and caused more damage than my guns. The orcs were approaching under heavy but useless fire and soon we will have to hold them back in melee. The horde is near. Our clash was opened with a few small shells exploding in the enemy biomass and soon turned into a bloodbath. Most of the orcs could not even swing their weapons before they were cut by swords, pierced by spears or shot by arrows and stray bullets which were all over the field. The problem is that there are too many of them. Soon we started taking casualties. Two adventurers were thrown into the orc mass, another was wounded. My tertiary guns were making some holes in the orcs but even with the help of my stiletto I was not enough to hold the enemy back. I was mostly just receiving the enemy hits in the other's stead. The future of both the village and our own was not looking bright. A side story of darkness and a cat no too. Wildcat the night came soon enough. I opened my eyes and the dark forest was now my playground. I searched around the area and even crossed the field. I managed to find a road and traces of activity. For now I need to return and plan my further actions. When I returned to my shelter I heard something approaching. I gripped the hilt and prepared to draw the katana. A wolf jumped out of a bush, slash its body fell behind me and the other wolves decided to retreat. I should not let them warn the other wolves. They will return and overwhelm me. I lunged forward and began cutting the wolves. It doesn't take much of my nighttime. Swoosh I avoided an arrow with a hair width margin. Swoosh, ping the second arrow did not catch me unprepared so I found the direction immediately and flowed there in the shadows. Where did she go? I ended up behind a hooded man with a bow. F me you are arm you. 
I covered his mouth and touched his neck with a blade. Speak, who sent you here, the sirens? I let go of his mouth but kept the sword at his throat. Who do you think you are? Understood, you last words? Do you even know who I am? If the K. Slit this position is compromised and soon the enemy will arrive. I must move out before enemy fleet arrives. I am too slow and unprepared. It was my mistake that I was spotted. I quickly made my way out of the area but soon I saw another hooded person on my way. The person spotted me as well and shot an arrow. Swoosh shh the arrow was shot before I could evade or block it but in the same time my evasion skills worked out and the arrow flew through me. I dealt with the enemy and saw a camp in front of me. V2CH13 The breakwater my plane was looking at the battlefield from above. Through the loud sounds of battle its engine was appearing as a wind. Because it was unnecessary to mask it while everyone is busy. I was getting a steady supply of information. The enemy army is getting shredded rapidly but even that was not enough to completely stop the advance of the orcs. When the pressure became unbearable I offered myself as a shield to hold the orcs back with my armor. The orcs bronze swords were too weak to even scratch my armor while my stiletto was making them die one after another. My survivability is a great advantage which makes the enemies stay here while the others are preparing to defend in the village. It is a risky move but we lack manpower and strength to keep staying outside of the village. I am assured that the enemy can't get past me until I myself decide to retreat. Mr. Light, retreat. When the others were done with their preparations I was called and within a moment I retreated. I can already feel that the collateral damage will be high but the villagers will repair what they lost, as long as they survive. With no reasons to hold back I continued firing whatever guns I have. The main caliber is out of commission and I am reluctant to repair its unreliable mechanisms. So for now I will have to do everything with smaller guns which do not have breakdowns worse than jamming which can be solved in seconds. Just how many are there? The adventurers were astonished by the amount of work they received. Did I not say there is an entire army? Furthermore, won't you be paid for the materials you gather? Adventurers in the novels usually receive money for trophies they gather, so isn't it better for them? We don't get any money for dying. I guess it is better to stop angering them while we are fighting. With one more adventurer dead our fighting capabilities decreased even more. What saves us is that there are not too many orcs. I doubt that the orcs send all of their army here. They might just walk over us if they wanted to. Nothing is going to happen if we will just stay here. I pushed into the orc tide. To their great surprise I am much sturdier than a common human. The reason I did this is to make the orcs surround me and thus my fire will have at least some chances of hitting anything. Even with me as a breakwater, there were too many orcs and too few hits to stop their advance. Soon I pushed far enough to make the orcs behind me try attacking me instead of the adventurers. It was enough to decrease their load to the level they can handle the enemies who make it past me. The village was turned into a mess. Everything is filled with bodies and shredded by the gunfire. I could only pretend I had nothing to do with this. The orc masses began moving again, this time, however, they were falling back. The ones who already were in the village continued fighting but the main enemy force retreated to the hills around. I could not understand their actions but at least it gave us enough breathing space. Ten minutes later I could cease fire and join the others in sweeping the last survivors. My gut doesn't tell me that something is wrong. Perhaps the enemy army acknowledged its excessive losses. Whatever happened, the assault has ended and I could concentrate on scouting what the orcs do. Miss Delight, what are you going to do? Lilith pulled my sleeve. I am sorry. It was rude to ignore you. What would you like to talk about? The orcs ran away so what should we do? L. There are too many of them. What should we do? I wonder. They encircled the village. What? Did she really think that everything is over? You don't need to worry. Just trust me. Yes. The best option. Listen, if you are such a capable person as to tell what the orcs do. 
Then how about you go there and help them find their way out of here? X. Did I not mention that it is my plan? Are you crazy? Xera was dumbfounded after my statement but it is not my problem. You really are Adamus. The orcs are not known for their hospitality. With their brutality going there is a suicide. X. Thank you for your concern. I shall be going. Xera, you are going with her. L. I. My lady. X. Did you not say that it is a suicide? While I am assured of my safety, it cannot be said about Xera's safety. Blabber all you want but those are my duties. I'm not going to give you all of the glory for stopping the orc invasion. I could only sigh and let her follow me. We never said anything until we arrived. V2CH14. A private detective soon we approached the orc position. Large figures of pig-faced monsters glared at us. A blood-soaked warrior with two swords and an out-of-place fragile-looking girl with a sky-blue cloak. While I expected the orcs to attack, none of them approached. As soon as we walked to them, the orcs stepped aside giving us way. Some of them were looking at us with fear, some with respect, some with sorrow and rage they barely held back. I quickly made my way to the place where I suspected will be their chief. There I saw a huge orc with countless trophies on his armor. He looked at me and his attendant gestured us to come closer. Xera smiled with a sense of pride and placed a sword on her shoulder. She walked forward but the attendant blocked her way. I made my way past the enraged knight. The orc chieftain and I stood facing each other and none of us was willing to greet each other first. In the end the orc gave me a small bow with his head to which I responded with a flawless curtsy. Strong, kill many brothers, protect settlement. No, why orc come? The chieftain tried speaking in human language but it was hard for him. My honorable enemy. It was my pleasure facing your brethren. It was too close to our death chuckle yet we really do not know the reason Yorkin attacks this village. Sweet words. Feeling mutual. Sweet tongue honorable. Me answer. Human stake from Orc. Orc want back. See. What did they take? Son. Heir. Never see back. Ask. Beg. Nothing. Gather brothers, come here. Die here from sweet tongue war sprite. This was enough for me to have some suspicions about the villagers. I am not going to say that I trust you but I still should look into it. However, if you think you can fool me. I threatened him, just in case. Orc stay here. Wait war sprite return. See? I turned round and dragged Xera by her hand. When we were far enough she asked. What will you do? Do you really plan to make the villagers answer about it? X, that is the plan. Do you think they will agree? I hope you are not that stupid. X, they will answer eagerly. No one refuses to answer when a blade is aimed at their neck. She grinned. It did not take us long to return. The villagers all gathered around us with happy smiles on their faces. The adventurers stood a bit further from the crowd and perhaps wanted this quest to end as soon as possible. I approached Lilith and whispered to her that something is fishy in this one. She nodded and went to the adventurers. Meanwhile, I approached the villager who was giving the orders when we were preparing. Congratulations. Thank you for saving us. He was smiling and thanking us again and again. Do you know why the orcs attacked the village? I dropped the bomb. They want to grab everything we have. What else could they want? I felt that he was confused for a moment which fueled my suspicion. Nothing else? They suddenly showed up to plunder the village? Yes, the S showed up not too long ago. He was even more confused. And it is not related to an orc child in any way. What are you trying to? Uh. I mean we have nothing to. I just pressed the stiletto against his throat. From this moment on, please, do tell everything sincerely. What the hell are you doing? Hey, noble, are you finally nuts? The adventurers ran here and tried to stop my interrogation but Xera blocked their way. Would you be so kind to tell? I continued pressing the villager. I don't know what you are talking about. Hey, you, we are paying you. So, my good sirs, will you ask him why you had your comrades killed, or will you try to stop me? 
the adventurers decided to wait until the villager tells. The other villagers were also not feeling comfortable and the one I interrogated finally spilled out what they did. So, you captured an orc child and then sold it to a slava? Then you understood you are in a trouble and asked for help. I feel like Sherlock. You. The adventurers were now being held by Xera to avoid bloodshed. Where did the child go? We. We can tell you. A couple of people who were involved in the deal have told me everything in exchange for me making the orcs go away. Soon I told the orc chieftain about that and the orcs retreated. I decided to go and search for the slavers whom the child was sold to. Lilith joined my cause too. So, busybody, where are we going now? Xera tagged along as well. For now we will go and find a town the villagers mentioned. There we will try to find more adventures. V2CH15 Proving superiority It did not take a long time for me to gather supplies for the travel and right after the sun showed up the next morning, we headed to a nearby town. After the recent battle I began seriously considering my priorities for upgrades. Yes, right, it would be great to fire guns faster than once every 10 minutes or to hit something not from point blank but my current priority should be to at least make the guns operational. I checked what I acquired and used all upgrade points into reliability. Ding you received one modernization, 5 upgrade points, 440 QFM K4, replaces SG, 1 skills point, 445 QFM KV single mount, replaces SG, 31 copper coins. 1240 MK9, replaces MG, HMS Delight, BC, Mod 1910 1935, Modernization Progress 5 tenths, Accuracy, 2 one hundredths Reload, 5 one hundredths Recoil, 1 one hundredth Machinery, 99 25 Guns, 94 25 Equipment, 99 25, Main Guns 1240 MK9, Loaded. 0, 0, 008 in repair fire at 0.11.5 range minus 24 kilometers secondary guns 445 qfm kv single mount loaded 0, 06 fire at 0 0.715 range minus 15 kilometers tertiary guns 1.8540 qfm k2 loaded 0, 04 fire at 120 AA guns 37 mm pom pom loaded 8 eighths 0 0.562 MK3 loaded 10 tenths 0 0.303 maxim loaded 8 eighths requiem LVL1 memento mori LVL7 lidi train LVL1 on activation tens reload for next salvo the following salvo has 40s reload. Can be activated every 40s. On activation, minus 25% chance of breakdown and flash fire. When this ship is hit by an attack that would otherwise sink it, 25% chance to completely heal this ship. Duration, 20s. Can be activated every 5 minutes. On activation, fires a salvo of helidite shells with higher chance to set fire on target and deal critical damage. Has 90% chance of critical malfunction. I confirmed that the guns are being repaired and that I am still not able to use them properly. Why are you sighing louder and louder with each step? If you're out of breath then just tell. Damn it. I don't like to babysit you. Xero was doing her favorite thing. She was driving me crazy. Were you not the one who tagged along? If you don't like the treatment then be so kind to leave. I could no longer even forcedly act friendly. I already was talking sarcasm to her like I breathed. Why can't you two just be nice to each other? Lilith was tired of this all as well. She was trying to make bridges between us but ended up resigning after she realized that it just makes everything worse. It might look bad but perhaps we are just incompatible? Oh my this might be the first time we share the same thought. I almost felt a vein showing up on my forehead. If you want to copy me then be so kind to at least try. Miss Delight, what are we going to do after we find a town the villagers talked about? 
Lilith interrupted Xera before she continued to argue. Well, first thing to do will be to find some information. As you can understand I am not exactly local. So if we hand you over to the authorities we can get reward. X, you might but it will not have any positive outcome. Xera, if you have something to tell then please tell what is useful. Like I am in the middle of actually trying to understand what we are even doing. Lilith began scolding her knight. I am feeling that this girl is much better than a certain. My lady, you trust this person who showed up from who knows where, you let her accompany us and now you let her order you around. Xera was doing her best to change the odds in her favor, and now I have my loyal knight try to order me around as well. I will tell father to reconsider your position when I have an opportunity to talk with him. L, now. Now, I greatly appreciate Miss Efforts but it would be best if she vents her aggression on one person instead of two, it would be a hindrance if she growls at both of us. Go to hell. Xera barked at me and walked forward without waiting for either of us. Soon she disappeared behind a ridge. She showed up again the next moment. My lady and Amber, I see a town from up here. Can you please hurry? I want to have a proper bath after this crazy march. X, when Lilith and I climbed up there we indeed saw a settlement in 5,900 meters. I wonder if a coincidence rangefinder is an appropriate tool for this but I still like to fool around with my tools just for the sake of amusement. We hurried a bit but Xera did not even pretend to wait for anybody. I bet she was a tomboy considering that she slid down the hill without considering how dirty her clothes become. You two are so slow. I almost fell asleep while you two took your precious time walking around each bush and stone. She was waiting for us at the bottom of the hill and began showing off. Oh my, I am so sorry we made you wait. It might be hard for you to understand girls' problems Tilda. I said that and crossed my arms right below the breasts which emphasized them. After Lilith did the same Xera's face was distorted. I guess she got the point. Our gifted duet defiled right in front of her and Xera tailed behind us with a defeated expression. With this sorted out we headed towards the town. Right when the town's walls appeared in our sight, we walked into the end of the queue to enter the town. The great waiting begins. V2CH16. A woman's terrifying smile. Who do you think you are? I just have to snap my fingers to crush this entire town. I turned the main guns at a man who shivered in fear. A bit further away were the town guards who were dealing with the rival formerly known as Gatehouse. Ten minutes ago, the queue was slowly moving forward, while we had to spend an entire hour just waiting to see the entrance. This was somewhat worth it. Soon we will enter and start searching. Meanwhile I was trying to gather some information. Do you know, are there any guild branches in this town? I approached a person driving a carriage. Oh, yes. There are the Adventurers Guild, the Blacksmith Guild and the Merchants Guild. After being charmed by my appearance the man eagerly answered my questions. Oh my. Are you visiting this town often? W well. Yes, I, I am a merchant, I know some things, if you want to talk about it. He abruptly finished talking when I climbed up and sat beside him. I am so curious about the life of townspeople Tilda. Uh. The man tried covering his blushing, can you please tell me, are there any interesting things around? Well, recently there was a festival, oh. And also I heard that in another town the mayor was recently changed. M, oh my, why is that? I heard he was accused of taking bribes from slavers. M, oh my god. So terrible. Do the slavers roam around in the open? Yeah. There were many cases when the slavers openly dared attacking travelers. I even heard they started taking exotic stuff. M, exotic. What could it possibly be? PSSST, a friend of my friend said that his neighbor heard from his brother-in-law that the slavers got their hands on an orc. But it's just a rumor, ha ha ha. Now it is getting interesting. I chatted for a bit and returned to the others. 
It was the time for us to pass the checkpoint. Your identification? A stern man in chain mail asked for our IDs. A pity that mine is non-existent. You can go, you. Uh, ma'am. The guard saluted Xera for an unknown reason. Might be because he considered her alpha male. And it was finally my turn. Your identification? He dreadfully looked at me to which I only smiled. Oh my Tilda, I must have forgotten it. Good sir, can you please look over it Tilda? Speech check. No. Failed. But dot Tilda no buts. If you don't have an identification then you can go back and pick it up. While I admire his zeal I am still prideful enough to not look over it. Might it be that? Eh Mr. Guard, can you? For a moment. Lilith whispered something into the guard's ear. Surprise me. He said. I tilted my head and put my hand on my cheek. If you are a such great magician, then show it to me. He whispered to me. I immediately looked at Lilith but she put her index on her lips and winked. Oh my. It is getting uncomfortable. I apologize for my companion's remark but I am not a magician. Whatever she told might not be true. Then you can't enter. I could only sigh. Miss Delight, you are sage, just show some of your magic and he will be convinced. This brat, just please dot tilde go away. W. I have no time to deal with the kinds of you. I had no words. Do you really think I will not be touched by your rude words? Wah. I did not let him finish. For the love of God, work out. Memento mori, requiem. Four guns have successfully loaded. I don't even feel sorry for wasting three repair kits. It was worth every damned penny. Come what may, you signed your death wish. Boom boom present if you ever dare saying such rude words to a woman. I will come and you bet I won't be as nice as today. H hey. Xero approached me but I'm not in a mood for her. Out of my way. I approached the remnants of the gate but the town guards blocked my way. After a single glance they scattered. See calm down. Mr. Light. It. Uh. It is not good for you to be frowning for no reason Tilda. A woman's smile is her tr And your face is so beautiful when you smile Tilda. Lilith was trying to appease me but I only felt even more irritated. For your own sake, shut up. I was walking with no apparent destination until I smelled something. When I looked in the direction of the smell, I saw a food court. Just go and pay for whatever she wants. Lilith was instructing Xero behind my back. I pretended that I did not hear them and headed there. A waiter approached me and asked what I want to order. One. No, two cups of tea. Uh, what is wrong? When I did not hear anything happen I looked up. The waiter was just looking at me in stupor. M my lady, W-E-D don't H-A-A. T-T. The waiter was hiccuping every word. It is not going to be hard to guess my expression. B bring her an infusion. Lilith salvaged the situation. Will that be enough? The three of them nervously looked at me. Yes, damn it. A side story of darkness and a cat no three. Silent hero I quickly hid behind a tree. The enemy did not follow the common sense of turning off any lights and thus their entire camp was in my clear view. I waited a bit to find out their patrol routes and guards and by the time I was ready I was only thinking about what will be my way of breaking in. I was about to open fire when I saw an unexpected activity. Some of the enemies dragged a person in handcuffs and began beating them. Now my plan had to consider the possible hostages. I can ignore the hostages if this will slow me down but currently I have no reasons to rush. It was a tough decision but I decided that the chaos of hostages running around and interfering will be worse for the enemies and will improve the efficiency of my actions. After I found the possible locations of hostages I finalized the plan and aimed the guns. Bang 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 we are attacked. Why are there explo? Run, just run. I broke the enemy morale and now I could go in and cut down any survivors. No, please. Have mercy. I don't want to die. I wonder why they attacked me if they wanted to live? It was their choice to fight. Soon I finished clearing the camp. 
I checked the hostages. As I suspected, the majority of them was killed during the fight. Luckily, I did not waste more time fighting than it was necessary. Four people approached me. Thank you. Thank you for saving us. I did not save the rest of hostages. Why would you thank me? It is strange. I heard that the humans regret not saving the dead more than they celebrate saving those who are alive. If we return to the city, you can be sure, we will reward you with everything we have. For now I decided to follow them. I might be able to return to the master. V2CH17 Calculated risk with uncalculated consequences After I drank two cups of herbal tea I calmed down. Only then I realized. I f up. I was going to silently gather rumors and then find the location of slavers. But I already must have warned every living being of my existence. And if that guy I talked to decides to tell anybody. Sir. Two more cups. Whiskey. Miss Delight. Are you perhaps? Royal? Lilith whispered in my ear. I assure you I am not. I don't want her to have even more misunderstandings. Here is some infusion, my lady. The waiter managed to calm down as well and was now serving me another teapot of herbal tea. I wanted whiskey, damn it. I wonder if I spent all of the remaining money the girls had but looking at their calmed faces I can guess they do not regret it. While I was drinking, Xera found an inn and spent our last money to book a room. It was just a shabby in somewhere in the slums, the employees were gloomy and were looking at me like I was a money bag. Considering this inn's location it was not hard to find a cheap vacant room and book it for a night. The next morning we left this scrappy place, I was simply walking around a marketplace and looking for what I can find. From time to time my dear companions dragged me away from interesting items which are a clear fraud. Miss Delight, please, 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 do not bother looking at this garbage, those items are clearly not worth anything. L, my lady, she is too retarded to understand that those are not genuine. X. Who are you to order me around? Pretend that we are travelers and stop pestering me. My father will not care what I buy. I sounded like I was scolding them with my villainous tone. I winked them and Lilith demonstratively nodded and pushed Xera's head to nod as well. While the second part was said quietly I have a feeling that it was well heard by some people and if I am right then the news of a stupid noble buying garbage will soon spread. I want to try attracting attention to myself. Either the slavers will think that I am stupidly rich and can buy their special offers, or they will think I am an easy target and they will try to kidnap me. For now I continued looking around the market. When I approached yet another clearly shady stand, I heard someone discussing a very interesting and exotic goods for the chosen few. I split from the girls and sneaked there. There were two men discussing something. They were quiet enough to make me approach yet they were loud enough for me to hear some details which were emphasized to get my attention. Kyle, I think we were heard. Let's head somewhere else. I don't want to let common rabble hear this info. They were clearly trying to lead me somewhere. Whenever I was about to lose them they suddenly stood and pretended to have a small talk and by the time I was close they continued walking. Soon I found myself in front of a tavern, filled with drunk people. One of the men led the other inside the tavern. I risked and approached. I walked to the counter and ordered some cheap brew. After the third cup the man approached me. He was one of the two I followed. Are you having a nice time, miss? I pretended I have nothing to do with him. When he tried touching my hand I slapped his away and looked at him like at garbage. What does a pretty lady like you do in this shabby place? How about I buy you a drink Tilda? He continued hitting on me yet I kept on ignoring his moves. How about some? Whiskey? Now that is an interesting offer, PSSST, this is not the best place for it. Go to Mary Mall and ask for a room in the attic. You'd love the exotic stuff there. He put a hand on my shoulder and after giving the bartender a silver he walked out. Right after I finished the murky water they call alcohol I headed back to the marketplace where I saw two girls waiting for me. Both of them were looking at me with bloodlust. Oh my Tilda. 
don't you effing oh my me, where the hell you were? It would not be surprising to say that it was Xera, Miss Delight. Do you even realize how worried we were? We were running around the entire town searching for you. We were ready to go to the guards and report you were kidnapped. L, we were, what you looking at, eyes down and kneel for making my lady worried. X, it was a calculated risk. We will talk about it later Tilda. Now, let's go to the room we booked while you were wandering around and having fun. I felt chills just from her sweet voice. I really have to apologize. V2CH18 Orthodox events. Have you reflected on your actions? L, yes. Lilith was scolding me for an entire hour. I was so tired of it that I was already dozing off but whenever my head was dropping, she immediately shook me. Miss Delight, do you remember that we have no money? We spent the last copper and now we are absolutely broke. You are found guilty by the court and sentenced to help us gain money. L, wait a moment, please. I demand jury. Of course Tilda. Miss Jury? She looked at Xera. Yes, Miss Judge. According to the room's law, you are found guilty and sentenced to compensate our expenses on feeding and accommodating you. X, fine. What are we going to do? I still have a guild's membership so we will go there and take a quest. And there we go. Will I need to join the guild as well? No, no. I wanted to leave the guild so for now we will just take one or two quests to save our pockets. L, knock, knock dear guests. Have you packed your luggage? You should leave the room by the noon. Thank you. After the inn's maid reminded us that our time is over we had to stop the talk and begin packing my small purse of underwear. We walked towards the adventurer's guild. When I entered a small hall I felt weird. In the hall there were a board where a lot of papers are clipped, a number of tables near the entrance and a counter near the back wall. I wonder what I can do while I am waiting. For now I approached the tables to sit down. It did not take long for smart caring and attractive men to approach me. Are you lonely Tilda? Come on, sit with us and we will tell you many interesting things Tilda. Do you want to touch some great muscle? Don't worry, pretty girl. We will protect you Tilda. I did not care and was just regretting not having tea. While the flies were annoying they were still not that noisy. Of course, soon some of them began thinking they are too smart and attractive and that I will not mind their greasy hands. Bam I stuck the stiletto into the poor table but the stupid musclerheads did not understand my point. Of course the hands stopped approaching me but the noise was still not going away. Now it was a matter of honor to not yield and make them go away via diplomacy and hands off me. Well, not exactly through diplomacy but at least without bloodshed. My good sirs. Did nobody teach you that women do not like being surrounded by stinking masses of muscle? I wonder if anybody taught you that under no circumstances can you touch a woman without her consent. And I clearly remember I did not give any consent. If you did understand me then be so kind and leave me out of your warm company. Thank you. Their faces clearly showed their discontent but after I drew attention of the entire hall the men had no choice and left me alone. For a moment I even had a hallucination of a female knight showing me thumbs up but it was surely the result of me suffering brain damage from the sweat roam around me. Now that I was victorious in the table warfare I decided to waste my lifetime looking at what quests I can find. The adventurers near the board eyed me but soon returned to their own business. I searched for interesting quests. Pick up the bag lost in the forest, help Mrs. Thompson chop the firewood kill baby dragon, gather herbs, gather goblins ears, hiring mercenaries, ask town guards chief, subjugation of a goblin nest, defend a village from orcs, urgent, child is missing, clearing a forest path, I was about to go away when I saw a small quest, clear cave from rock spiders, the reward was nice, the task looks easy. Now that I have nothing else to do I took the request paper and headed to the counter. I immediately saw Lilith in the organized crowd and began slipping there. 
I was almost there when somebody grabbed my hand and dragged back. Would you mind letting go of my hand? I asked a muslered guy. You know what, chick? I might be a nice guy but if you think you are such a smart one and can slip in ignoring the cue then don't expect me to ignore it because you are rich. Gee, oh my, you must have misunderstood me. Do you see those two people? They are my companions for whom I carry this request. Ah, sorry, girl. I didn't think it might be like that. He scratched the back of his head and apologized. Do not mind it. Now that this is solved, I should excuse myself. I returned to the queue and began squeezing to the counter. V2CH19. The first quest it wasn't hard for me to find my companions. I poked Xera and passed her the request. Are you crazy? Do you know what you want to sign up for? Just compare those two. X. On the paper she gave me I saw clear an abandoned village from Kobolds. The task seems to be a piece of cake but the reward is like ten times less than for my quest. I doubt this one is even worthy of my attention. You know what, we can split and do two quests simultaneously. In this case we will gain more money in the same time span. No we can't, only Lady can take the quests and without her participation we won't get any reward. The guild can just tell us to F off by saying thank you for your contribution as it is officially formulated, because whenever an outsider does the quests, the guild assumes they didn't know about the quest and did everything because they wanted, not because there is a reward. X. Thank you for the explanation. I was disappointed but it looks like we just need to do one of the quests and then proceed to the next. I don't like your expression. You aren't going to do both of the quests, right? Please, tell me you are not that retarded. Xera facepamed. Even if you think it is a bad idea I should remind you that I am not as weak as you think I am. I can handle anything. Miss Delight. I too would like to ask you to reconsider this. Fighting kobolds is easy but the spiders are a different league. Only Xero has chances in one on one fight but this quest will make us fight an entire nest of them. I dare taking on the extermination quest only because I have you and Xero to help but it is a completely different story if we were to face the rock spiders. L. If something goes wrong we can just. Did I mention there is a fine for not completing quests? L, I barely have anything to refute them but I still don't want to throw away this chance. It would be an entire cave worth of targets. It is full of my precious upgrade points. I feel like I am going to regret this. Miss Delight. We will accept this quest with one condition. Lilith facepamed and reluctantly agreed. I want you to tell us a bit about yourself when we will be alone. This demand is unreasonable. It is outrageous. Either you accept my lady's terms or you can say goodbye to this paper. Xera is merciless too. Goodness gracious. Then it's settled. It was now our turn at the counter. The clerk looked at us with suspicion but considering there was a D-rank adventurer among us he could not refuse. It did not take long to process the request and we were now ready to head out into the wilderness of a forest, without food, water and equipment. Our first quest will be to clear a village from kobolds. I volunteered to do it all by myself so the others will stand behind me just for the quest to be considered done by an adventurer. While we were on the move I saw something on the radar. It was approaching from above. When I was ready to open fire I saw that the object separated into many and that it was just a flock of birds. They circled above us for some time and then flew away. The radar continued showing them circling above until I rebooted it. It was already getting dark when we found the village. I tried using radars to scan for ground targets and for whatever reason the radars were not showing anomalies and non-existent objects. There are many dots and most of them are just a useless trash. If the goblins are considered dangerous when there are many of them then the kobolds are trash even if there is an army of them. We headed straight into the village to clean up everything that inhabits it. The houses were abandoned for many years and most of them crumbled. 
in those moss gardens the kobolds built their nests. I opened one of the houses and saw a number of small wolf-headed creatures with glowing yellow eyes. I blinded them with one of my searchlights. By blinded I mean they are never going to see anything again. It is like staring at the sun for a couple of hours. Their lives are not going to last that long though. I repeated the same trick again and again. After that the kobolds began hiding from me and my pace of killing them slowed down. I came up with a new technique. Lilith and Xera spook them and after they start running I blind them. While the quest is mostly about searching for the kobolds, it is still a dangerous quest. There were times when some of them tried attacking Lilith from behind, in those cases Xera was using her strong manly body as a shield. When the final rays of sunlight disappeared from the surroundings we were done. My radars did not pick anything. There were no sounds, and Xera was not beaten by anything. A side story of darkness and a cat no for escorting the former captives since I volunteered to help the hostages return it was not surprising I have to move at their pace. The people that followed me were dressed weirdly. Jackets made of thick leather, simple tunics and gambsons. I don't understand the reasons they wear such clothes but it has nothing to do with me so I ignored it. I looked at them and confirmed that there are three males and one female. Neither of them looked like civilians but they were not looking like warriors. In the end my curiosity made me lose my composure. Who are you and how you ended in captivity? Last week we took a quest to subjugate a monster in this forest but it was a trap. The bandits were capturing the adventurers who walked there. If you didn't help them we would be sold somewhere or killed. One of the men, a tall guy with a long nose said what happened it was incomprehensible why there would be any criminals doing such things without interference from local police. I see. The people looked at me in confusion. Sorry but is that it? I, I understand that it is too much to ask but. Another man, with moustache, was going to ask me something but the female closed his mouth. After I realized they will not continue talking I continued walking. I'm worried she is a cannibal and will gut us tonight. Stop spouting nonsense, especially now. She saved us so show some gratitude. I hear you. I turned to them and pointed at my ears. For an unknown reason the ones who were talking had their faces reddened. V2CH20 Consequences of negligence The kobold extermination was easy and I was satisfied with my performance but for the second quest I decided to consider Lilith's warning that the rock spiders are strong. Instead of just going right into a fight I decided to prepare and patiently move with an elaborate plan. This quest will require some serious power. Wait a moment. Hey! Are you crazy? I snatched the cave's map out of Xera's hands and checked for the exits. There were only two known entrances. If, for example, something was going to create high pressure at one of the entrances, Miss Delight, can I ask you to start sharing your plans with us? There were many times when we too had to worry about you because you never tell us what you are going to do. Lilith grabbed my hand and did not let go of me until I finally yielded. Perhaps you are right, I will make the rock spiders regret the day they were born. I winked and walked forward into the cave. What do you mean? L, are you not looking forward to seeing what miracles I am capable of Tilda? I decided to pick her curiosity and thus avoid having to describe everything for the sake of her not getting any of it. Oh my Tilda, Xera, prepare to witness the true might of the sage. While I don't get the sage part I still hope that I will be able to blow all of the spiders out of the cave. I summoned the guns and aimed them at the entrance. I walked closer until I was inside the cave. After I activated both Requiem and Memento Mori I waited. One of the turrets had autoload a jam so its guns did not finish reloading. Second and third turrets successfully finished loading but the fourth turret had fire in its electro-hydraulic system. The jamming was not resolved fast enough so I only had half of my guns. No, 
wrong. I had the entire half of my guns ready to fire. Boom 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 a loud blast of heavy guns sent dummy shells into the cave. A wave of high pressure gas was blocked by the walls and because of that it was directed inside and turned the cave into a huge gas cannon which created a dreadful shockwave enough to kill some of the spiders. After the initial fire I headed inside and turned on the spotlights. The girls followed me in a distance. I am going to attract a lot of attention so it won't be surprising if the spiders will attack me and ignore them. The area around the entrance was empty, even small rocks were blown away, not to mention the spiders. I wonder how large the targets are but if they were all killed after my salvo then it should be alright to proceed deeper inside. At 300 meter mark I started seeing debris from the pressure wave. From that moment I paid attention to any sound or shadow. As if my companions understood that I am no longer wandering around. They stopped talking and silently followed me with a closer distance. Just in case I started loading the main guns. I had one more jam and another fire. The jam was resolved rapidly and thus the guns were loaded. Now I have four guns out of commission and four loaded. When we were halfway through the cave, I thought that something will happen but I still didn't hear anything. Neither did I see the spiders. While at first I was soothing myself with the thought that I just blew them all away but now I am suspicious that they managed to run away and it is not a good sign. The dark corners of the cave were not always illuminated by my spotlights and there might be something hiding. I was not expecting that there will be an entire swarm of spiders but I was still prepared to start shooting if they do attack. I gestured the others to come closer. What is going on? Lilith whispered quietly yet it sounded like a shout because of echo. There should have been spider bodies or something but I see nothing. What do you want to do now? X, swoosh tra ta 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 something flashed in a distance and I fired a burst from machine gun. The echo carried the firing sound throughout the cave. Dune relax. It looks like the rock spiders are close and they are alive. Tap 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 a sound of something walking arrived from behind. Soon it was followed by another sound from our front. The number of sources was increasing and now it was clear that we are surrounded. So much for my genius plan. I could only resort to self-mocking for my own unpreparedness. As the spiders were slowly approaching I ordered, stay close to me. And aimed one turret to the front and the other to the back. As I saw the silhouettes appearing I opened fire boom 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 boom. Remember kids, don't fire guns of any caliber in a tight space, especially without protecting your ears. All of the actions here were performed by professional idiots with directing by an amateur. A side story of darkness and a cat no five. Common sense I tried hard to understand when I will encounter allies. I walked for several days but I did not see even a single car. Not to mention allied ships. The area I am currently passing is not even close to any body of water. When will we arrive? I asked the people I travel with. If my memory serves me correctly we should encounter a town tomorrow. The third man responded to me immediately. I remembered that he has pretty face. The conversation ended immediately. Hey, now that we spent a few days side by side, can you tell us your name? The moustache guy wanted to know my name but I did not understand why. Do I need to do that? It is common sense to at least know who you are talking to. He was disheartened. I am Kiranami. Please, take care of me. I did my best to repeat the phrase that the other girls say when they greet somebody for the first time. Nice to meet you. Every one of them greeted me. She was foreign name. It can mean only one thing. She came from a land far away to be married to a king. But because of the bandits she is now here. I looked in the direction of the speaker and saw the moustache guy. Just. Just pretend you don't know him. The female asked me to forget about him. Understood. Hey. The moustache guy called me. Hello. I am Kiranami. Please. Take care of me. What? For an unknown reason all of them were surprised but they said that it is common sense. And you are saying that I fell from the moon. I think she completely lacks common sense. We should keep walking, 
otherwise we will not arrive by tomorrow. I reminded them that they stand still for too long. V2CH21 If you can't stand and fight then be a good shield. The guns have fired and after a flash turned into a smoke I checked the surroundings. As the smoke was settling and the distant echo of cordite explosion started dying, I felt something hitting my head. A number of small stones and rubble were falling from the ceiling. For the sake of simplicity, let's assume that Lilith and Xera did not have their eardrums ruptured, did not suffocate because of lack of oxygen and breathing in the gases or did not simply end up squashed because of gas pressure. Soon I confirmed that the spiders were turned into a new paint for the cave's walls and ceiling. For now there were no steps which I could hear. A good sign? Let's go. We should go deeper into the cave. I called the girls to hurry up. Miss Delight, is it fine to use such magic on the rock spiders? Would you have enough mana to continue fighting? L, thank you for your concern Tilda. I am stronger than I look like Tilda. It was pleasing to have somebody concerned for you. Why the hell are you looking at me? Unlike some ungrateful, Miss Delight. You should conserve some mana. We are yet to encounter the Queen. L, from this moment on, please give me some details. The Queen Spider is a tier 4 monster. Only the strongest magic can hurt it. L, I have only half of my guns operational and only now she f tells me that there is something super hard to kill waiting for us. All four barrels immediately drop down and only two of them return to the firing position. We are dead. Now not only I was pale, they too understood that we are screwed. The spiders returned and now I felt like if I fire the 12 inch then we will have zero chances of winning. I opened fire with all the guns, except for the heaviest. 47 mm shells landed right in a large group of spiders and dealt a large amount of damage. They even killed a few of them. Pom 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 I don't know if the one who made high caliber maxim is a genius crazy, or both but the spiders which only were stunned by smaller caliber fire were torn apart my 37mm shells from pom pom guns. While they fire slowly and barely hit anything, they were also making the spiders life much shorter. Most of the shots were hitting walls and ceiling but some stray shots occasionally were killing and wounding spiders. Their cuticles are sturdy and only direct hits from cannons could kill them. The machine guns were only able to wound them. Soon I faced another problem. The machine guns ran out of ammo in their belts and now they needed to reload, which takes them 10 minutes. I already was only firing salvos of shells to maximize the musket-like accuracy but now that I ran out of ammo the situation turned from problematic to catastrophic. Well, now we are completely surrounded. What are we going to do? You must have any ideas right? Xera glared at me. Oh my. They are on our sides, in front of us and behind. They can't get away this time Tilda. What nonsense does she spout every time? X, follow the sage. To battle. L, I pretended I didn't hear anything but considering how well we are situated our only way of fighting is melee. So uncivilized. I pierced a spider with the stiletto and kicked another which attacked from behind. The poor thing turned into a cannonball and hurt a few more of them. It did not take me long to understand that my choice was not the best. I soon had to hug Lilith to protect her from spiders which were hitting my back and sides with their claws and spikes. Boom I fired one 12 inch shell and the shockwave turned the surrounding spiders into mashed meat. Now I had some space to fight and began piercing them with a stiletto. The hits to their body were not doing anything but when I pierced a spider's lower half, where its legs are connected to the body, it immediately started convulsing and died. I used this newly obtained knowledge and soon I managed to make the spiders retreat. They returned with some cavalry, a huge spider with another positor. The thing rushed at me and I was ready to fire an AP shell into it. Boom it was a miss but the shockwave made it lose balance. The enraged monster began flouncing and I had no way to get close to it. Lilith was mumbling something and when she stretched out her arms, 
The queen was hit by a huge icicle. The monster was stunned for a moment which I did not waste. It took me almost a minute to finally kill the queen which had no way to get me away from its belly. As it started falling I lost my grip and was on my way to hit the floor when something caught me. I did not believe my eyes when I saw that Xera caught me midair and firmly gripped my waist. I was about to thank her for the rescue. Ping, ping, clang, ping my back was hit again and again by something. Stop wiggling, damn you. If you can't stand and fight then be a good shield. You, you bastard. Ping, ping, pew. Ping a side story of darkness and a cat no six. Not silent but deadly with the first sunlight we arrived to a strange stone construction with an appearance of a castle wall. What is this? I was curious why this is here and why there are so many people and wagons in front of it. Isn't this the town we were staying in? How did we end up here? The female was confused. Ha ha ha. Sorry. I forgot that it is the same town. The pretty face too was confused. What are we going to do? We will wait. I reminded them that we still have waiting to do. Ah, yes, they might even let us in. The moustache scratched the back of his head. We were waiting for a lot of time but soon we approached a large wooden gate and a couple of armed people approached us. My my, whom I see. Hey, you four, are you immortal? Get out of here before I call for your buddies. A guy in a helmet took out his sword and continued approaching. I changed my posture to a combat stance and immediately put my hand on the handle. What's her deal? Hey, Crazerheads. Did you pick up a slave? If you sell her to us we might look over your arrival tilde. The second man looked at me appraisingly. You better not approach her. She saved us and we will do our best to protect her from the likes of you. The companions were agitated but I did not flinch. I only focused and prepared to strike. Ha, huh, show me what you are capable of. The first guy stretched out his hand to touch my breast. As I was taught, slice the moment his hand touched me he was cut in half and I returned to the position. The second guy immediately ran away with a weird smell coming from him. I apologize for the inconvenience. I bowed down to the other people in the queue and walked into the gate. V2CH22 Unbelievable truth Both quests were completed and now I can be freed from the mandatory work for Lily. We made a small fortune tilde. She was happy and now we have enough money to focus on the other things. We walked out of the guild and just when I was about to slip away I had my sleeve grabbed by muscular hand. My dear friend, do you think you can escape the serious talk I promised you? Lilith was looking at me with a creepy smile. While I was in confusion Xera grabbed the other hand and now I am led outside of the town. Soon we arrived to a desolate place where we are not going to have unnecessary people around. As I was turned around towards my captors I could only sigh and introduce myself again. As you already know I am delight. While we met under very eccentric circumstances I am not here to harm you. I am. The sage, right. Lilith was still having that misunderstanding so I hurried to clear it once and for all. I am not a sage. Neither I am a mage. I, how to say. A soul of a warship which took a human form. Judging by the girl's expressions they expected everything but that. I am Her Majesty's ship delight and I am sure I have zero traces of magic. Huh? Those were the only words they squeezed out. The world is much crazier than the craziest of our dreams tilde. I chuckled. While they were feeling like fish out of the water I checked the stats. Ding new achievement. Killed the queen of rock spiders you received one gold coin. 10 copper coins, 14 upgrade points, 3 repair kits, 2 fire extinguishers, 5 modernization points, 6 PDR QFM K2, replaces TG, 1 skill point, 1245 MKX, replaces MG, 340 QFR MKV, replaces TG, HMS Delight, BC, mod. 1925-1945, modernization progress 3 tenths, accuracy, 2 one hundredths reload, 5 one hundredths recoil, 
one one hundredth machinery, ninety nine twenty five guns, eighty twenty five equipment, ninety nine twenty five main guns, twelve forty five MKX loaded, zero two six in repair, fire at zero point one one point five range minus eighteen point seven kilometers, secondary guns, four forty five QF MKV single mount loaded. 06 fire at 0 0.715 range minus 15 kilometers tertiary guns 340 qfh mkv loaded 04 fire at 0 0.715 aa guns 37 millimeters pom pom loaded 8 eighths 0 0.562 mk3 loaded 10 tenths 0 0.303 maxim Loaded 8 eighths. Requiem. LVL1. Memento Mori. LVL8. Lydi Train. LVL1. On activation, 10s reload for next salvo. The following salvo has 40s reload. Can be activated every 40s. On activation, minus 25% chance of breakdown and flash fire. When this ship is hit by an attack that would otherwise sink it. 25% chance to completely heal this ship. Duration, 25s. Can be activated every 5 minutes. On activation, fires a salvo of helidite shells with higher chance to set fire on target and deal critical damage. Has 90% chance of critical malfunction. Now I have almost 50-50 chances of exploding. It is still terrible but I hope one day I will be able to focus on something else. Am I crazy? No, it shouldn't be the case. I am sure it's because you are just a complete dumber. Xera was as confused as she was before. I was somewhat calmed down by the fact that she is not freaking out. A nice joke. Miss Delight surely knows how to make the best jokes. Ha ha ha. You don't need to hide your powers. I am sure people will understand. Unlike Sarah who assumed that I am crazy. Lilith was just going crazy herself. I showed them my gear. Xera curiously checked out the details. She amply touched every ladder and gun. She kept on asking questions about everything on the deck. Lilith on the other hand did not do anything but look at me from a distance. Lily, are you alright? Might I do something to help you? I approached her but she stepped back. If I can't talk to her properly then I should just use a bit of force persuasion. I almost flashed behind her and hugged her from behind. Right after I stopped moving I felt something inside my chest. It soon turned into pain but I ignored it. M Miss Delight. I strengthened the grip and whispered. You don't need to be concerned. If you want to believe in what you imagine, then so be it. I might not be the perfect person for the image but I will not break apart your dreams. With this I released her, what do you think you are doing? Right after I released Lilith from my hands, I had a swords aimed at me. Mr. Knight, calm down please Tilda. I swear I saw a vein popping up on her forehead. Bull's eye, all right, girls. What are we going to do? Should we go and deal with the orc request? Should we go and deal a lethal blow to the slavers? I summoned them to approach. Now that I see how crazy you are, tell us what your plan is. Xera shrugged her shoulders and pretended to listen to what I am going to say. Do you remember that we have some money? I would like to have all of them to pretend to be a rich noble girl. The slavers look like they took the bait and might want to invite me to buy their special offers. It'd be naive to think they really trust you are stupid money waster. Wait. X, oh my. Did you two believe in my acting skills? I am pleased Tilda. She rolled her eyes and started mumbling something into the sky. I trust you. Now shut up, took Sarah, and take my money, to me. Lilith was full of energy but I think it is a part of her charm. V2CH23 Shady shopping normally right after you gain a fortune you begin wasting it to at least live in a proper place. Because we are unique bunch. We booked a room in a shabby cheap inn somewhere near the slums. In comparison with our previous inns it can be considered inconspicuous. We saved a lot of money in exchange for a barely furnished room. I really hope you won't throw away this bag. 
Xera reluctantly gave me a bag with silver coins. I can't promise anything but I will try. I joked while I was putting on a dark cloak which will hide my conspicuous blue clothes. Miss Delight, would you need to know how much nobles spend? I. I might not know everything but I have some connections with lower nobility. L, please. Enlighten me. I heard that when nobles are just acquainted with a the shop then they usually don't spend more than five gold coins and never buy more than a couple of similar items. The first shopping is their way to learn about the shop so it would be suspicious to buy a lot. L, oh my, thank you. Lilith Tilda. I patted her head and headed out of the room. Right after I got my hands on the money I headed out to the place the supposed slavers advertised. I found Mary Maltavan only in the evening. The place was almost hidden somewhere deep in the town and its entrance and sign were in a back street. I tried opening the door but nothing happened so I began knocking. A minute later I heard the sound of a key being inserted and the door was slightly opened. A man looked at me with suspicion. What the hell you need? M, is this how you greet others? I was slightly offended by his attitude. Not my problem. Speak fast, I've got other things tardy. M, and then I thought this is a respectable establishment. I almost wanted to have a room in the attic. F forgive me. W welcome, dear customer. His attitude was now completely different. He amiably asked me to come in and became so humble that even I was flattered. Where can I have what I came here for? Please, follow me. M. The man led me to the second floor and shown me to a room. There were some armchairs and a large couch. I sat down and waited for five minutes, as I was about to go and look for what is going on. The door opened and two men entered the room. They bowed and waited until I gestured them to sit down. What kind of goods are you interested in? One of them handed me a booklet. I lazily flipped a few pages until my eyes met an interesting offer. Is that a foreign alcohol? What kind of it? There I saw some kind of a fruit liquor, surely not the most legal considering it is cheaper than I think it should be. Oh, you have good eye. This is Sylvanian Blossom. It is very hard to acquire but its taste is perfect. The man was trying to sell me this liquor but I was still hesitating. I plan to spend a few hundred silver coins on this to draw their attention to me and to lull their vigilance. It would be too suspicious if I asked to show me slaves right from the doorstep but if I was to buy a lot of their exotic goods, most of which I suspect are smuggled, then they would be thinking I am a genuine customer. Can you bring me one? Yes, one bottle. If this bottle interested me then I should try buying it. I can't be too picky. Would you like to buy more? The sales manager began persuading me. I don't know you, people. I don't want to risk my head just for the sake of s alcohol. Sorry for the inconvenience. Please, tell me if you are interested in any other item. The seller was disheartened but I hope he thinks it is because I don't trust them yet. I looked through their catalog and picked a few more items which in total are worth a bit less than three gold coins. Before I pay for this, are there any guarantees of quality? I was glaring at the men but neither of them was surprised. Of course, there is a payment check, while it contains a bit corrected information to protect the customer's interests. The checks are real and are accepted in the royal courts. With this I handed them over the payment and the cashier immediately returned me the change. When I returned to the inn I checked the packed goods. There were a bottle of liquor, a pair of earrings, two rolls of cloth and a bone flute. Funny thing, while I could not make sure the items that I have here are the same as the ones that were shown to me, these goods were actually of high quality. I did not check the liquor and saved it for later. The girls do not need to know about it. A side story of darkness and a cat no seven. Payday I was walking through a town. Around me there are many people who are doing their weird activities. Some are buying food, some appear to be wandering around, and a couple of them were beating a third person. What are you looking at? However, dealing with them has no benefits for me. Ha, big bro, you saw how she ran away? 
Those chicks only know how to stick their noses in the other's affairs. Soon I forgot about that incident. Curan army. There is a room we had booked in the inn. Do you mind if I go there and take our possessions? The pretty face asked me and ran away without waiting for an answer. Why did he ask me in the first place? A few minutes later he returned with a couple of bags and we headed out somewhere. When we entered a house with a green terrace I saw a large number of tables and a lot of people. I bet you must be hungry after all of this, we'll pay for whatever you order. The female helped me sit down and like a waitress headed towards a counter. Ten minutes later she returned with a lot of plates. There were meat and fish dishes, a large bowl of salad, several plates with snacks, and most important one, a roasted chicken. It's dark emas. I enthusiastically mumbled and began eating. Dialing what the hell? Where is the food? It was here a second ago. They all must have thought the same but only one of them voiced it. It is my pride, eating everything in the most efficient and fastest way. I rarely show this skill to the outsiders, they must be feeling honored. Uh. The main course please. I raised my head and asked for the main course. Q underscore Q, V2CH24. A new weapon the next few days we laid low and did not attract attention. Of course we did things that are normal, like going to the marketplace to buy some food or going to eat something in the taverns. Lily finally left the Adventurers Guild but because we have Xera, we still had to think about arming her with something but the rusty stripe of metal she carried until now. That was the main reason we went to a blacksmith shop. While I was unenthusiastically looking at the shelves filled with pricking, chopping and slashing things. Lilith was just talking to the shop assistant about cost to sharpen her dagger. Kaiawar activity was constantly accompanied by an orgasmic screams of a bee in heat. If only I knew this will happen I would never come along in the first place. Could you please shut up your mouth? I reminded our noble knight that she is not alone and that she already drove crazy all three of us. But, but, come on, look. This is such a fine craftsmanship. I bet that it is the same master as the one who made the sickle of thorn rose. And this one is. I really do regret coming here. Just because I came here out of pure interest and coincidence. I now have to listen to the super interesting facts about swords and blades. I might have some minor interest in this but not the level of having my brain cells turning into mash. She keeps telling me this exciting information about swords and just because I am still in the same room I have to listen to it, even though my brain cells are already dead. Yeah, right. Indeed, I always wondered why a bastard sword is different from a claymore. It took Xero another hour just to calm down and start searching for a normal sword. Meanwhile, I checked out the price list and confirmed that if she ends up buying more than one weapon, then we will be bankrupt after I buy something from the smugglers, slavers, Miss Delight. Are you going to buy something for yourself? You only have one knife. I heard a concerned voice, which belongs to Lily. Don't mind me, I don't require anything for now. I wanted to point out that we have no money for this but if I do so and somebody hears that and reports that then the gossip will break our, my, plan of fooling the slavers. A good blade is never unnecessary. Why don't you try some of these? I assure you, you will soon find a great weapon to protect you. Our workshop provides the best weapons in the entire region. The shopkeeper was so persistent that I had no chance to refuse him and soon he almost dragged me to a shelf with expensive luxurious swords. If he is so persistent then why not? Do you know how to swing a sword? I emphasized my disbelief. If my lady wants to try out the goods then I know a few moves. The person took one of the swords from the shelf and stood in a stance. I decided to test how my stiletto will handle a proper steel sword. Ping daying to our greatest surprise the stiletto, which is surely created for everything but cutting, did cut the sword and its blade fell on the floor. I I I I guess. My lady doesn't need anything from this shop. S. And my apologies. I. I never expected. 
KHM. I hope this accident will not hurt our partnership. I was so embarrassed by this that I did not even try pretending I know something about the weapons. When I turned away to hide myself somewhere I was met with the other eyes. Both of them were as dumbfounded as were we. Miss Delight, I understand that you are strong but can you please keep your strength in check? L, you are saying it like I knew this would happen. Tell me if there are any other stupidly overpowered abilities you have. X. Yeah. Right. Meanwhile, the shopkeeper vanished through the back door. From that point our rapid unplanned withdrawal was assured. I wonder if the blacksmith would make us pay a compensation for the broken sword but now we'll never know about that because we've already ran away. I was not surprised to know that today we did absolutely nothing useful so to change the situation I headed out to the Merry Mall. This time I was met properly and soon I was in a room where I could start choosing today's goods. Because I have all of the money and none of it was spent today I can buy a bit more to show that I am on the hook. As I was done ordering the stuff and went down to the ground floor I had a small talk with one of the salesmen. I wonder why today's catalogue is so lacking. My apologies. We are yet to receive a new shipment. It should arrive in a few days. S. Good to know but while it arrives, can you offer something else? Of course, if you would like to check out more specific goods then please, come at any time. Password will be winner. S. Thank you for today, farewell. Now, I just need to prepare for the last part of this charade. Today's catch is another bottle of fruit liquor. A bag of gems and poetry by an unknown, for me, author. We have one silver coin remaining. V2CH25. Race against time right after I returned I was met by Lily. Miss Delight, can I ask you for some money? I need to buy some cloth. L, can I ask why so suddenly? PSST, cloth, necessary, fast. L, did I understand you correctly? I stroked my belly. After she nodded I gave her the silver coin. Why only one? Where is the bag? She was confused. Why would you need more than one? I didn't see the bag I gave you so I just wondered. Never mind, I'll be gone for an hour, take care of Xera. I was almost expecting to see the squirming knight in agony but she was perfectly fine. Why would she ask me to take care of you? I voiced my disappointment. My lady wanted to go alone and I let her go if you accompany her. Now that you are here, get out of my way. She steamrolled at me and now I understood why I was meant to take care of Xera. You aren't going anywhere. If she wanted some privacy then let her be. Just in case I prepared to beat the privacy into her nut-sized brain. Did I ask for your opinion? Go away. X. I unclenched my fists and continued talking. If you think you can move me then be so kind and dry. I smiled at her and while she looked like she was about to go rampaging and glared at me with hatred, she must have still remembered that I am not going to be defeated. To hell with it. She jumped on the bed and started reading a book. When Lilith returned she headed straight towards me. Miss Delight, can you spare me one more coin? L, sorry. I must conserve them all for today's visit. Are you sure? Just one silver coin. She looked at me with puppy eyes. Sorry but I can't. I can't give her what I don't have, milady. Don't you think she has something to hide? Now I had all the reasons for panic. Come on, when did I ever lie to you? Righteous mode activated. Then hand over the money. You do have it, right? X. Miss Delight. Don't tell me you wasted all of our money. L, one moment please Tilda. The door is close, just one more step and I can. If you move one more step I'll consider you wasted our money on useless things. Lilith cornered me with her words but if I just managed to run away, can you please come here Tilda? We have a talk to do Tilda. Lilith is looking at me terrifyingly. The door is blocked by Xera and now I only have the window. Are you in a hurry Tilda? Where is there money? L, come on, I did what was necessary. So you admit you spend all of it? L, I'll find a way to pay it back. 
You'd better have some results or I will make you kneel until tomorrow's night. L, she will go to the slavers today so if she doesn't return by the dusk we should consider punishment. X, considering that I am now no one. Criminal in Lilith's eyes, I absolutely have to save the damn dork. I do not want to kneel for 24 hours. No way I would. I knocked at the door. What do you need? The man asked me but after he opened the door he only whispered, password, winner. Welcome, welcome. Please, wait for a moment, somebody'll come soon. M, soon the usual face of the salesman showed from the second floor. Hello, what are you planning to buy today? S, the lady asked for some books. M, oh, splendid. Please, follow me to the library. It is in the basement. Watch your step tilde. S. Right when the salesman opened the door to the basement my nose was met with a wall of stench. By the time we descended into the basement my nose wanted to commit suicide but it couldn't. I looked around and was absolutely terrified by the sight. The animals at an improvised animal market where they are treated like already dead would still be handled better than the human-like beings here. The floor is covered in filth and I am sure I smell something dead rotting. The cages are as big as the ones used for dog transportation, saying that the slaves are kept without fresh food and water would be unnecessary. Right when my eyes landed on this room I summoned my gear and began loading main guns. Either I do something or I wouldn't be able to sleep calmly. I guess it's time to do things the loud way. I had two of the turrets jammed but I think four guns would be enough to deal with the slavers hideout. For now I will find the orc child and get the slaves out. I don't want to bury them together with their torturers. What kind of goods are you interested in? S. I think it'd be funny to have a child servant. If it is possible I want a strong child to have a bodyguard in the future. Please, follow me. Soon he showed me one of the cages where I saw a beaten baby with greenish skin. The baby did not even cry of pain because it had no strength. I want to have a look. The child was handed over to me. The moment it ended up in my hands it opened its eyes and smiled. It was surprising how it welcomed me even though it was the first time it saw me. I gave it a cold look as if I was looking at a thing. Now I only need to think how to do everything without attracting unnecessary attention before the slaves are safe. V2CH26 Escape I was brainstorming my options. It did not take long for me to decide to knock the salesman unconscious. I doubt there are many people here and I would pretend he remained in the basement for his own reasons while I returned to the ground floor to pay for the slave. When the salesman turned away from me I hit his head and climbed the stairs as if nothing happened. Miss, where's Paul? The man asked me about the salesman. He is still downstairs. He said he has some job to do and offered to wait for him here. Without saying anything the man drew a short sword and ran at me. I immediately dodged his attack and with one hand took the stiletto. Before he could say anything he dropped dead with blood coming out of his chest. I guess the plan had some minor flaws. Instead of regretting my bad choices I hurried to do everything before something goes wrong. I had to torture myself again and return to the basement and free the slaves. I opened a few cages but none of the slaves crawled out. When I tried dragging them out of there they resisted. I tried convincing them, I assured them that nothing bad will happen. I even used some food to attract them but none left their cages. Soon the salesman woke up and saw the tip of the stiletto in front of his face. No screams, no foolish actions. I don't mind killing you so it'd be better for you to cooperate. He nodded. Tell the slaves to come out of the cages and go outside of the building. He ordered the slaves something and they obediently rambled upstairs. I followed them with the salesman behind my back. While I thought he'd try attacking me, he was just trailing behind me. I guess he is just a white collar who messed with the wrong people. Are you not going to use the opportunity, Tilda? I am not stupid. I'd rather spend a few years in the prison than die here. S. Good point. Not that you could kill me. 
When we exited the building I confirmed that the slaves are outside but we were surrounded by a lot of guardsmen and some shady people were telling them random crap. Surrender at once, or we will have to kill you. Gee, oh my, you want to help the slavers? How honorable. I finally was ready to deploy heavy guns and aimed one of the turrets at the Merry Mall. You captured and tortured people, and yet you pretend to be stranger? Gee. If I am one of them then why would I suddenly make all of the slaves go outside where they can be spotted? Why would I want to demolish this building? How would you destroy it? Ha ha ha. The guard who talks to me started laughing. From 5 meters even I can hit a stationary target. If the shells don't fly out of the barrels at 90 angle, boom the wooden building shattered like glass. Everyone around me was deafened by the cordite explosion and while they were in confusion, I turned the second preloaded turret in the direction of the guards. Might I ask you, whom you would believe, me or them? TTTT take her. I was disappointed that the guards did not think about what happened and decided to believe the slavers. I was now forced to open fire but my priority target were the slavers who incited the guards. Boom the shockwave torn apart everyone in front of my guns and also dealt a lot of collateral damage to the buildings around. There were not many guards that still were capable of standing up so now that I was almost done with everything I decided to head back with the orc baby. I soon arrived back to the inn and nonchalantly showed the baby. What the? Now I guess we return to that orc and give him this? X. Perhaps you managed to return the money? Well Xera's response did not surprise me. Lilith was too persistent about money. I did return some money but right now we should be concerned with another thing. Yeah, I heard that explosion. X. You don't understand. The town guard wanted to arrest me. Now their faces immediately changed. Okay. Okay, don't panic, we should slip out of this town and hurry. Mistress Lilith gave us new orders and in a minute we were ready to go. Miss Delight, might I ask you to prepare to make some noise? L, I did not use Requiem to accelerate the reload and Memento Mori to save myself from malfunctions. It was stupid to think that the main guns would reload without issues. The small jet of fire coming out of one of the guns confirms it. Only two of the guns were reloaded but other than fire there were no life-threatening incidents. Now we only need to escape the crime scene. V2CH27 An unexpected discovery three suspicious figures walked out of the inn. They silently headed to a back street and dashed towards the town's gatehouse which was still in ruins after a recent magic explosion. The gatehouse was guarded by a large number of people but occasionally some people were passing through it even though it was midnight. So, what is the plan? L, we might distract them or hope they won't recognize us. X, I will go to the other side of the town and make my distraction. I just hope you will wait for me. I checked the guns, just in case and rushed to the planned firing position. I almost walked into a patrol but I hid before they could spot me. I bypassed the first patrol and was not found by the second. After I was past the third patrol I found myself near the position and deployed the 12 inch boomsticks. Boom I chose the position where I will not cause collateral damage by firing even with my low angles. There were a couple of sheds destroyed in the process but other than that I consider it a success. The guards rushed here immediately and soon swarmed the firing position. By that time I was near the girls and we headed towards the gatehouse. I was not surprised to find that not all of the guards ran to the distraction so I prepared to do what I can, talk. Where are you three going? Gee. We were here with the adventurers guilds business and now that we are done we headed to another town. And, yeah, right, did you not hear the explosion there? Do you think I would just let you go in times like these? Gee, we are going exactly because of this. This town is not safe so we have no other way but to leave. I hope you understand that I have my duty protecting this cute little girl. I showed him cute and little but not in all places girl. Listen, miss, I am not blind. She is not that little. Do you see the... 
Uh, so what I am saying is that why would you need to protect her? The guard was somewhat confused so I continued bulls my way through. My good sir, if you would judge a lady's age by her bosom, wouldn't that make her, Xera, a child? Would that not make me younger than my cute little knees? Are you done? I have other things to do. Go away. Failure. Come on, sir, just let us pass and we'll have no need to keep occupying each other's time. TCH, to hell with you. Go, damned women. Gee, after we were far away from the town I was pushed from behind. If you were not so irritating the guard would not let us through. This is a compliment. Xera sarcastically smiled at me but I have a good response. Perhaps he wouldn't let us through if you opened your mouth, Tilda. I should express you my gratitude. I performed a curtsy and smiled with my most angelic smile. Go to hell. Xera stomped and walked forward. I immediately felt a glare. I understand why she would always act like this but why are you acting like a child? This is so foolish of both of you. Lilith crossed her arms and looked at me with condemnation. Fine, fine. I am guilty. Let us hurry and get rid of the child. Which was crying whenever it was not in my hands. On our way we were ambushed by goblins. My long range weaponry did not hit any of them so the fight soon became a slaughter. With a foul mouth knight and beautiful lady fighting, the goblins were turned into spaghetti. Lily, does the guild still accept materials even if you are not a member? No. Only members can sell them. She was as disappointed as was I during our travel we could have accumulated so many materials that I could have bought a few upgrade points. When we were near the village where we got the orc quest, I saw a figure in the distance. I did not dare launching hydroplane so only half an hour later we approached close enough to recognize an orc. This one did not attack and with its hands raised it approached us, orc, greet human, human follow. It read the greeting from a paper and walked somewhere. A few hours later our silent green guide led us to the orc settlement. The one that was not hit successfully during the fight. The orc chieftain met me immediately. The others were kept at the entrance. Thank you, war sprite. Geralt and safe. Me ready to reward. While I was considering what I can get a bold idea crossed my mind. How about we two have a spa? I would like to know how strong you are. He nodded. Before start, me invite war sprite drink. Now I was the one nodding. A minute later two orcs brought a table and two crudely made stools. When the drinks were brought I sensed something weird with them. The drinks were murky and quite surely not the most refined but I knew one thing about them. It is tea. A side story of darkness and a perno 8. Nightlife checking time. 21.59. The sun has already set and the people who paid for my dinner asked me to share a room with the female from their group. After I confirmed that they are sleeping I jumped out of the window and started searching around the area. 1.14 The night activities of this town didn't interest me so I just wandered around searching for anything useful. A couple making a baby is not interesting so I walked out of a back street before they spotted me. 3.21 I was reading some papers in an office. Occasional guards were not interested in this place so I was not disturbed. Falsified bookkeeping, possible corruption, love letters. I was disappointed that humans don't have anything notable. I continued searching through the papers. 5.40 before I walked out of the office. The door opened and a man entered. S. This wretch keeps pestering me. Why can't this FB shut up at least for a day? The man was navigating through the dark room and was too close to touching me but his hand found what it was groping for. A table lamp turned on and the man was petrified in shock. I must take my leave. Now that I was sure he did not try to touch me I sheathed the katana and headed to the window. W what? W who are you? Why are you here? I was about to introduce myself when I remembered that the people like a habit with asked me not to introduce myself to strangers. I wanted to find something interesting. There is nothing interesting here. So I am leaving. I jumped out of the window and considering that the time is 5.45 I headed to the inn. 6.30, what is going on? 
despair I woke up when I felt something patting my chin. It is still morning so I should go back to Sul. Per V2CH28. T brawl I was both delighted and terrified to see this drink. It is both a fragrant and refined tea, and murky vomit inducing goo. Can I ask what this is? I forced a smile to my stiffened face. Good drink, make strong. Might I know where you got it from? Me not tell, forbidden. Oh my. Now I have a good idea what to ask for as my reward. If I win the fight, will you tell me where you got it from? Yes. The chief emptied his cup in one go and waited for me. This is tea, I must drink it. No, stupid. Don't drink kai tea. But it is tea. No, you'll die. But, please, for the love of God, don't drink it. I was torn apart by the exciting future I have in front of me. Gulp, OS, here we go, sip, sip, sip the tea tasted like it looked but I am still alive. For now, ha ha, brave. The orc was applauding in admiration. Let us fight before I pass out. I stood up and headed to a field. The orc chieftain followed me. We took position in ten steps away from each other. I grabbed the stiletto while my opponent grabbed a huge mace made of a solid bone. Ready when you are. I notified the judge and in a moment he swung his arm. Ping. I did not even notice that the orc moved but I was hit in the stomach. He withdrew before I managed to regain composure and counterattack. Right when I was about to leap at him, I was hit in the back. This time I turned around and with a flash fast strike hit his shoulder. We immediately broke the contact. Are you fine? I had to express some concern because this is a mock fight. Fight and pain make Hawk strong. Me thank war sprite. Clang I parried his attack and was about to hit him again but now it was his time to block me. We continued exchanging pleasantries but for some time we could not find any openings. It all changed in one moment when I saw a chance and grazed the orc. As the fight continued I was gaining the upper hand. When I was about to strike again the chieftain raised his hand and exclaimed, Me fight with full strength, war sprite, not hold back. He was agitated so I decided to show him what he wants. Six small boxes turned at him and fired. Bang 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 I fired all six secondaries and scored a hit. The chieftain was thrown back by a dummy shell. Should I take it as a win? I gave him my hand. Strong enemy, strong orc. He happily accepted my help. I supported him to the hut where he lives. The orc medic showed up fast and started quite a peculiar treatment to the chief's broken arm. Now, about my reward tilde. I smiled and prepared to listen. Human carry drink. Orc not like human. Human pay orc drink. Orc let human pass. Human carry drink rare. Two sons future next carry. Me give war sprite guide. Farewell. Fare thee well Tilda. Now it was my opportunity to obtain some tea. I should just get myself some tons of tea for the future. I am sure I have enough space in the storage. As I walked outside I was met by the girls. So, what are you planning now? Lilith was curious to find what my next move is but I only putted a finger to my mouth. Not bad, not bad at all. You even were close to winning against the talk. I might say you are capable of fighting goblins by yourself. X, oh my tilde, I am so glad to be acknowledged by a capable man. I grinned at how her expression changed in an instant. Hey, now you are being mean to me. If you didn't know, it is the first time I ever praised anyone but my lady. When I paid attention to Xera I saw that she was really offended this time. To avoid Lilith's scolding I decided to apologize. Sorry, I was wrong. However, I would like to know if you are really going to follow me. I mean, I am about to go and rob somebody, not to mention that we are no longer bound by anything and are free to go. Hey, Dumba, do you remember who spent all of our money? Not me. Not me. Stop it. Xera, Miss Delight, will you be fine with us following you? Ever since we met we saw so many interesting things, 
before our acquaintance we were only having routine quests and barely had anything exciting but now I feel like every day is a chance to know something new and exciting. My heart was melted by her cute smile and how the breasts were dancing around with her moves. My apologies. I doubt that I can protect you all the time. I think it would be better if we don't stick so close together. It was a tough choice but I am just a walking barrel of explosives. Then one last time, come on, we will help you carry what you robbed and you will let my lady follow you for a couple more days. Fine. Unexpectedly Xera was not the happiest one with parting ways. Instead of thinking too much about it I checked the rewards I should have accumulated recently. Ding new achievement, defeated the chief of tough skin war band you received one gold coin, 37mm pom pom quadruple mount, replaces heavy AA, 445 QFMK15 twin mount, replaces SG, 6 upgrade points. 3 modernization points, 1250 MK12, replaces MG, 0.562 MK3 number 2, replaces light AA, 1 fire extinguisher, 7 copper coins, 13.545 MKVL, replaces MG, 345 QFR MK4, replaces TG, 1445 MK2, replaces MG, 350 MK10, replaces TG, 2 skill points, 0.562 MK3 number 3, replaces MG's, HMS Delight, BC, mod, 1935-1949, modernization progress 7 tenths, accuracy, 2 one hundredths reload, 5 one hundredths recoil, 1 one hundredth machinery, 99-25 guns. 74.25 equipment, 99.25, main guns 14.45 MK2, loaded, 0.8, fire at, 0.11.75, range minus 18.2 kilometers, secondary guns 4.45 QF MK15 twin mount, loaded, 0.12, fire at, 0.459, range minus 15 kilometers, Tertiary guns 350 MK10 loaded, 04, fire at, 0.7515. AA guns 37mm pom pom quadruple mount loaded, 32 30 seconds. 0.562 MK3 twin mount loaded, 2020. 0.562 MK3 number 3 loaded, 8 eighths. Requiem, LVL1. Memento Mori, LVL-10, Lydite Train, LVL-1, on activation, 10s reload for next salvo, the following salvo has 40s reload, can be activated every 40s, on activation, minus 25% chance of breakdown and flash fire, when this ship is hit by an attack that would otherwise sink it, 25% chance to completely heal this ship, duration. 30s can be activated every 2 minutes. On activation, fires a salvo of helidite shells with higher chance to set fire on target and deal critical damage. Has 90% chance of critical malfunction. V2CH29 Grand Theft Wagon I was in high spirits and happily walked forward. On our way we should walk close to a river and I planned to launch a hydroplane scout to find the caravan with T and also find possible positions. The negotiation is not an option, as Lilith explained tea is royal drink so only the most powerful of this nation can have some at special occasions thus it is only natural that the tea is going to be protected and no one is going to let me take it without a fight. I want to display an overwhelming power to deter the escorts and then take all of the tea. When I saw a river I immediately headed there and just for the sake of trying I prepared one catapult. The plane was launched right into the ground. The second plane was carefully deployed in the river and successfully ascended into the skies. I spent the next hour figuring out the route and the positions around the caravan's location. Yes, I found it fast and I am already starting to prepare my plan. There are three large wagons with tents above the cargo. 
no less than 30 guards and there might be some inside the wagons. I found a suitable position on a cliff near the road. The cliff is high and steep which will hide us before we attack. With this my operation was leaving the planning stage. Why are you spacing out? When my consciousness returned to this perishable world I was called out again and again. My apologies, we should go. I found us a good position and we will go there and prepare for a hijack. The girls did not understand what is going on but did not voice that. When we arrived I was relieved by the fact that the cliff is really well suited for my plan. I even found a good firing position where my guns were able to aim at the road. The plane was still having enough fuel to continue flying and I sent it to keep an eye on the caravan. The waiting begins. When the caravan was in a few kilometers from us I began the final preparations. I sent the girls and the guide away to a bush while I myself started loading the guns. This time I did not make the naive mistake of not using the abilities. I had to fight a fire, I had to send a damage control party to repair broken hydraulic shell elevators, I had one of the turret's hydraulic systems completely fail, and I had a small explosion in the fourth turret. In short, None of the guns were loaded and I have no way but to use the repair kits to make the guns operational. Considering that there is no way to guarantee I will be able to reload the guns even if I do repair them, I changed the plan to use the smaller guns. While I was fighting the problems the caravan approached and now they surely see the smoke pillar coming out of the burned turret. Judging by their actions they think it is a forest fire but they still prepared for a danger. As the caravan was close to passing below me I opened fire around the caravan. The horses immediately went crazy. The escorting soldiers also were shocked and scared to death by the sudden gunfire coming from above. As I sent kilograms of lead and TNT onto the road, the escorts scattered around in terror. In a single jump I dropped down from the cliff and walked to the prize. I checked the first wagon and confirmed that it is filled with dried and ready to be brewed tea leaves. I began scooping the tea and then I had an idea to open the stats screen. The tea which was around it got immediately sucked in so soon the remains of the first package were in my storage. Total amount of tea conquered is 597 kilograms. I approached the second wagon. The remaining few brave souls blocked my way but after a short burst of gunfire above their heads they ran away. I acquired 508 kilograms of tea. The third wagon was mostly carrying some random stuff like food and personal belongings which limited my prize to just 325 kilograms. Right after I cleaned all three wagons of any tea dust that remained I immediately disappeared in the nearby forest. I already prepared a rendezvous point where I will meet the others. When I arrived there, the girls were there but the orc guide already left to return to his tribe. The operation was great success and I acquired a lot of tea which should last for a few days. My total catch, minus the dirt, dust and other undesired things is 1,411 kilograms of tea. I wonder how many tea leaves are required to make the water in my boilers turn into tea. So, are we going to part our ways now? Lilith was sad so I decided to make a small concession. If you want you can follow me until we find a town. There we will have to split. Who knows for how long we'll travel. Yes, who knows for how long you three will travel. I turned round and almost fired all machine guns at a woman who approached us. You three are to follow me, if you don't then you will have to face the kingdom's army. I guess we are in trouble. V2CH30. Arrested? What a nice summer, what a nice evening. The birds sing under the sunshine and I am voluntarily imprisoned. For now we reached an agreement with the governmental officials that they will not try to actually arrest us while I will not annihilate them. The girls are escorted by two armed knights while I am strolling with the woman in charge. You are strangely calm for someone who is escorted by knights. The woman was occasionally making funny remarks about how obediently I follow them. There were no signs of hostility coming from her but I was nervous for I could not properly see her face because of a hood. I looked at Xera. She was not concerned with the escort. 
It might be just another routine day for her so I guess she really is a troublemaker. Meanwhile, Lilith was really scared and shivered whenever the knights closed the distance with her. When one of them approached her too close I turned round and waved him a finger not good. After my little gesture for some time neither of the two came too close, yet I am still worried. My good lady, can I ask you to make them stop worrying the gifted girl and pester the man who escorts her? I don't think it is possible. Even if I order them to not, they will still approach her. They rarely see women other than the ones who are knights. As you can tell, the women knights are not as attractive. I could only giggle at her remark. Hang in there, we should arrive soon, right? How long will we be walking? We are close. Sorry for the unusual way of traveling but we had no way to bring in a carriage, not through that vegetation. W. Oh my. Don't worry about it. We all love sightseeing and got used to walking. Might it be related to the reason you attacked that caravan? W. Oh my. Did you find us for another reason? Exactly. You caused some commotion so we are here to take you somewhere where you should not be a threat. Now, can you answer why you attacked the caravan? W. Yes, yes, that caravan carried some tea which I was so desperate to obtain. Are you serious? You might get in a serious trouble for this. I don't know who the owner of this caravan was but at least it would be a Viscount. W. More than a ton of tea? Sorry, I misunderstood the situation. The King. W. I am becoming quite famous. Whatever the King would want he shall not have any tea. My precious tea. Are you really not worried? You are guaranteed to be called by the King if he finds out you are the cause of the shipping missing. W. Come what may, I am sure there is no way he can stop me. Ha ha ha. I like your attitude, young miss. W. The sun was setting when we arrived to a camp. I got used to the night activities during the last week but today's share of surprises is that I had such an action-packed day. The woman sent the knights away and asked us to follow her. When we entered a large tent I felt a deja vu but there were only a table a bed and some small furniture. The woman asked us to sit down and sat in front of us. Then she took off her hood and Lilith exclaimed, Principal. The principal is a beautiful blonde with pink eyes. Her figure is feminine but not too standing out from this world's average. With such a plain dress I would never distinguish her from a normal citizen, not in a crowd. Lilith almost flew down from the chair and immediately prostrated herself. Even the cheeky knight was shivering from the woman's glare. Meanwhile, I was concerned for my own reasons. Ems, can I ask you for some hot water? W would you need a cup? The woman was flustered but immediately headed to her table, picked a cup and passed it to me. For an unknown reason the cup was already filled with hot water and I immediately started my tea brewing. To be exact I just used one of the pantsu as an improvised tea bag. Everyone dropped their jaws but quickly pretended that they did not see my extravagant action. Now that we are ready for discussion, can you tell us what is the reason for this abrupt kidnapping? There are two reasons, the first is I needed to find a missing student, glares at Lily, and her missing knight, glares at Xera. The second is I heard there is an extraordinary individual with powerful magic. Just the fact that you have a storage space with capacity to hold a ton of tea. P1411 kilograms to be exact. Sorry, what I am saying is that you are an outstanding individual whom we ought to have in our academy. P, my apologies, what? I, as the principal of Rose Heap Academy, invite you to become a student of honor in our academy. Considering that you already know Miss Evan. You will have no problems. P. Well, considering all that has happened, my answer will be. V2CH31. School admission I find it funny that I spent four years studying in my university only to return to studying in a school. This academy is a place where nobles and distinguished commoners learn their school curriculum and some university level things. Well. While I am not exactly a schoolgirl I might try returning to the school days with a few conditions. 
I'm listening. The principal's face stiffened. Don't worry. It is nothing unreasonable. First, I want to keep my weapon. Second, I want to keep my clothes. Third, I will accompany Lilith whenever I want. Fourth, none of the classes are mandatory or require me to attend exams, unless I want to. I showed her my stiletto and just in case my purse. Well, all items but the last are accepted. You are going to be a student with a lot of freedom but please, for the sake of the academy, attend the classes. If you really don't want to attend then we can work this out in private. P. While I like your suggestion I still want to have some freedom of actions. If I can have no compulsory work then we can talk about it. My last concession is that you can have exams in absentia. If for any reason you won't be able to pass them then I will personally solve the issue. Are we good now? I nodded. Uh, Madame de Croix, can I talk to Miss Delight for a moment? Lilith whispered from the floor. Of course. I hope it will not be related to the... Before the principal finished Lilith dragged me out of the tent. Miss Delight. I want to talk about us. Lilith looked super nervous when she asked. I don't actually understand what you mean by us. You said you'll leave us. I faced Sorry, I had no time to tell you. I want you to be close to me. While I doubt I can actually help you with anything, you can still follow me as long as you want. I already expect some tearful reunion. Not that we parted our ways. Thank you. you wait. Did I really predict it? Oh, come on. Don't cry. A good hug should solve the issue. While Lilith was calming down I thought about what I will even be doing now. Like, I really doubt that the medieval school will grant me any knowledge. I already graduated from school and almost finished UNI. Let's head back. They must be worried after hearing all the weeping. I urged her to return. Right when I entered I almost had my neck kissed by a sword. Right before it hit me I stopped the blade with my fingers. You have one minute to explain why my lady cried. X, if you look behind me you'll see that she is far from being unhappy. Could you move this thing away from me? Lilith peeked from behind me. Can you tell what you talked about? The principal was curious but I did not tell her anything. We just needed to clear one misunderstanding tilde. Lilith chirped while still hiding, if you say so. Miss, can you answer some of my questions? I will fill the admission list for you. I almost wanted to tell her that I can do it myself but just in one glance I understood that I can't read anything there. The language is too different. Please, pass me a cup of water. I need some tea. The second time I brewed tea nobody was surprised. What is your name and do you have a title? P. Delight, Her Majesty's Servant. Do you have a family name? I immediately began thinking what to do. If I am not mistaking then I should have one. Just for the sake of it I decided to use an interesting one. Yes, I am Delight of Windsor. Now that I think about it, okay, I did what I did. So stupid. Age? P. Write that I am 16. Lilith you are 16, right? She nodded. Just to satisfy my own curiosity. Do you have an education? P. Yes. I graduated from the University of F. Fine. Next. Sex. Noble. You are not just a maid, right? Next. Testing results. Sciences. Perfect. Etiquette. Perfect. Arts. Perfect. Magic. Magic? P. I'm not. She is sage. L. Miss Evan. Can you please remain silent? P. I. Can you please tell me what kinds of magic there are? Before I tell that I am not a mage I might as well pretend that I am some kind of a fire mage. My main guns are just magical boom tubes for everyone. There are air, darkness, earth, fire, light, void and water. Now I just need to say this is fire. Fire magic, surely it is. Can you show it? I piqued her interest. I have strong but dangerous magic, it is better not to show it everywhere. She gestured Lilith to come closer and showed her something in the list. Lilith showed something herself and the principal wrote something. 
Now that we are done, welcome to the Rose Heap Academy. You will be assigned to the experimental magic department, just like your friend. Because all of your possessions should be here I think you can head out to the academy. I trust Miss Evan will not mistake the road again. When you arrive, please come find me. I will need to introduce Miss Windsor to some people. P. Wait a moment. We will need to go ourselves. Lilith screamed in terror. Don't forget. You have five days before the autumn semester. Good luck. The principal clapped her hands in the tent and everything inside disappeared. Crap. We need to hurry. I agree with Xera. We need to hurry. V2CH32. Heart of Iron it was the fourth day we walked. I kept on whistling and already managed to make the girls crazy. We somehow found a road because the principal left us a map with detailed route to the academy. Of course we walked in the wrong direction. There is a river which directly leads to the academy. If we were to walk all the way we would never arrive in time but if we were to steam there using this waterway we can make it just in time. The current plan is to abandon Xera because as a knight she is not required to be in the academy by the start of the semester. We walked closer and closer to the river and will soon arrive. If by any chance this river is large enough I will deploy the ship here. If not then I will just have some soft things rub against my back for a few blissful hours. Milady. I suggest we leave her alone, she is a pervert. Xera feels my soul too well but because I keep my face the same she can't convince Lilith that I like having something soft touch me. Lilith, can you take my hand, we better stick together. If something attacks us then it will aim for Xera because of her meaty body. Without any hesitation Lilith stuck close to me and had my arm squeezed between the warm and soft lumps of fat. I wonder if she even understands that I am just doing this for an arbitrary reason. Meanwhile, on the outer side of Delight's arm. She is so cool. She can defeat anyone just by using a few spells. I wonder if she is interested in me. I am so happy she wants to have my body close. Oh. If she were a man would she want to do this and that with me? Oh Tilda, the this and that is left to your imagination. When we finally found the river I confirmed that it is too small to fit my body. Well, I always can just carry Lilith in my arms. Come here, we should go. Lilith unglued herself from my arm and happily glued herself to my front. I firmly hugged her to prevent her falling into the water. Hey, Dumba. If something happens to my lady I will find you even if you are on the other side of the world. Xera looked like a worried mother who sends her daughter to the first date. I quickly accelerated and in less than a minute I was steaming at the maximum speed. Very soon I felt that the engine is at its limit and I slowed down. The problem is that with each second I felt the pain in my heart become stronger and stronger. I checked the stats and confirmed that my turbines were having irregular rotation even with a proper supply of steam. The word F is the only one that crossed my mind right now. If I were to compare my steam engine to my heart then the boilers would correlate to my blood pressure. If they failed then I have less pressure and can barely move. The turbines on the other hand are the heart itself. If they do fail then it is similar to having my heart stop. So. Currently I am having a heart attack. This time instead of waiting until the turbines are completely dead I use the repair kit. The turbines immediately returned to a stable rotation and my speed and heartbeat normalized. Miss Delight, are you alright? I felt like your heart stopped beating for a moment. Lilith sounded concerned but I could not tell because her face is buried in my chest. I am alright. Whenever I push my limits, I have my mechanical heartache. This is terrible. Even if we are late the principal will not punish us too hard but if something was to happen to you. L, instead of a tantrum I'd rather have you calm down, if you fall you might die. If you see how fast we are going then I bet you will make the right call for now. 
With this she went silent until the end of our adventure. When I launched a hydroplane the catapult did not work so I had to risk using the second catapult. After it failed as well I remained blind and could only rely on my radars which only showed a static image which was there since the beginning of the river run. I'm blind in the middle of a huge river and can hardly tell where we are. I checked the images of the map again and again until I vaguely estimated the position and when I expected we will arrive I slowed down and approached the coast. Disembarkation proceeded smoothly and Lilith was safely delivered. We walked for a few minutes and then, right after we walked out of a line of bushes we saw a number of huge buildings surrounded by a fence. Miss Delight. Welcome to the academy. Let's go, we might make it in time. With this Lilith dragged me somewhere until we saw a large metal gate with forged metal letters. Rose at Magic Academy V2CH33. The first test the first thing I did after we arrived I asked Lilith where the principal's office is. She led me to a large brick building somewhere between the entrance and the largest of buildings. Right when we entered the building I was stopped by a guard. Who are you? I never saw you before. Gee. So you are saying you know my companion? Ha. Huh. Miss Evan is our frequent guest. I started chatting with the guard and subtly hinted him that the principal waits for me. The man appeared to be cold but after some time I understood that he would be a great companion in a pub. Lilith was way too silent in comparison with her usual attitude but considering how many people there are around us I couldn't find a good time to ask her. When we arrived to the principal's office she remained outside while I entered. Good evening to you, madame. Can I report our arrival? I blinded the principal with my smile. Good evening to you, Miss Windsor. P. Might I ask you to refer to myself as Delight? for this is the name blessed by the royal family. Or so it should be, if you say so. Sit down, please, I will call for the teachers from the experimental magic department. She left the office while I admired the view from a huge window which covered the majority of the view of academy, if a map on the wall is correct. The buildings in the academy are all painted white and when I used binoculars I saw that in few places the paint cracked there are bricks. There are lots of windows and their frames are decorated with reliefs and engravings, as well as small columns. The doors and entrances are also decorated with columns. I wonder if the academy's architects were inspired by Greek culture, or its equivalent. I am back. The teachers should arrive soon. Do you need anything? P. But of course, it is tea time after all. M. Might I ask for some tea as well? I wanted to say no but for now the woman did no harm yet. I have no way to give her a polite refusal so I gritted my teeth and extracted an extra pantsu. P. Please, don't use such things for tea brewing. It is so embarrassing. P. We live in desperate times when there are no ways to brew tea using proper utensils. My undergarments are clean, I assure you. I hope she gets what I hint her. Give me a moment. I will look if there is something like a teapot. In the end she found some sort of a clay jar where I brewed the tea and only required to pour it into the cups. Soon somebody knocked and a group of six people entered. Some of them were irritated. What happened to the... I can show off so why not, Madame de Croix? Is it the person you wanted to present? I may not be correct but I welcome the teachers. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Delight, Her Majesty's faithful servant. I flawlessly followed the etiquette and after I was done introducing myself I saw six opened mouths. Ha ha Tilda, my god sirs and sirets, please, do close your mouths for a fly can fly in. Are you all going to stay like that and embarrass me in front of our new student? Only after the principal raised her voice the teachers unfroze and sat down. There were four men and two women, all are past their years of youth. Miss Delight, I will introduce them to you. This is Mr. Renowen, the head of your department. An old man with long beard nodded. If I was to describe his appearance in one word, he is wizard. This is Mr. Callins. The practice class teacher. 
He can be described as a middle-aged easy-going guy. This is Mrs. Sangers, the etiquette teacher. She will evaluate your etiquette and if everything is fine we'll say that you attend etiquette classes in absentia. A typical old noble madam. This is Mr. Muron, the arts teacher. He looks old and I feel like he has some experience as an artist. This is Mr. Frangle, the theoretical magic teacher. P. Yes, yes. Madame de Croix mentioned you are a capable mage. Can you tell me who is your mentor? Mrs. Sangers watched my reaction. Oh my, I am but a self-taught. The middle-aged hyperactive person was disappointed but I feel like we won't be seeing each other too often. And finally is Miss Evan Senior. She patted the shoulders of a relatively young woman. Miss Evan was not looking at me. She was melting me with her glare. Did I miss here? No. Your friend's mother is unmarried. P. Now I understand why this girl likes to hug so much Tilda. My joke only made the mom's glare turn from melting mode to incineration. Catalina, please, she's the first friend that Brat made. Don't scare her away. P. Oh my, if only that much was enough Tilda. Meanwhile, could you tell me when we will have our rendezvous with this good lady? Ah, my apologies, I forgot. Miss Evans Senior is our sciences teacher. I guess asking you to attend classes will be unrequired. P. Absolutely Tilda. Now that we are done here, Mrs. Sangers, announce the test's results. P. As your name implies, you surely did not disappoint me. Please, do teach the brat how to behave. I hope she will listen to you. Why do I feel like something's not right? A side story of darkness and a cat no nine. There is no such thing as a free lunch good evening. How are you feeling? The first person I saw after I woke up was the moustache guy. Hello. You slept in and now I can only wonder what you were doing during the night. He approached me and I prepared to strike. I was searching for something interesting. So you were going outside and with your superior skills fought against the evil? Great job. Underscore. Where are the others? I am so hungry and they are not here. You want to eat something? You know that there are no free meals, right? He smirked. I understand what he means. Every time I visited the cafe, Akashi Nyan would rob me of all the golden circles master gives me. I don't have golden circles with me. What the heck, you are that rich? He freaked out for an unknown reason. Perhaps he wanted those red glass things? Hey, guys, we're back. The other three people returned. Grumble one moment. The moustache guy and the others stepped away and started whispering. Men, I know she's great but if we continue feeding her we'll be completely broke. Moustache guy, how about we take her to work with us? We could take harder quests and get more money. Pretty face, which all will be used to feed her. Long nose, what a circle of suffering. MG, hey, am I the only one who remembers she heard everything? They all looked at me. Yes? I tilted head and waited for their question. Uh, cure an army, are you fine with becoming an adventurer? P.F., what does it mean? It means, uh, F. It means free food. Lane, I accept. Ship food is a chapter, introducing new characters. Somewhere in the Atlantic, two lonely trails cut the wavy surface of the ocean. When a scout hydroplane confirmed their destination the headquarters dispatched a fleet to intercept. This will be an easy hunt. Those girls must have gone crazy to try and slip away. A heavy cruiser with a cross on its flag clapped her hands and increased her speed. No way will I let you be the first. They are mine. A fellow cruiser accelerated. You two, calm down and proceed according to the plan. We will engage them at maximum range and while they are busy with fighting us you will lead the destroyers to launch torpedoes. The fleet was accompanied by two battle cruisers and the HQ was ready to send in two more battleships. Attention everyone, the enemy ships changed course. What are they doing? Are they crazy? They are heading towards our reserves. No way, do they have a death wish? They will only be met by our battleships. 
Ha ha, it will be too late to fire at them if we don't hurry. Kaboom a number of explosions were heard in the distance, the main task force hurried to at least do something before the pride of their navy sinks two daring girls. At the rendezvous point they did not encounter the two battleships that were supposed to arrive. What is going on, where are the battleships? They must have chased after the cowards. I can't contact them, what is going on? The girls dispersed and began searching around in hopes of contacting their carried away battleships. One of the heavy cruisers headed into a thick smoke and cried out, Somebody, over here. The others hurried there and saw. Their two battleships, burned and unconscious. W what happened? I am possible. My my, what a nice company we have here. Everyone turned around when they heard an unknown voice. So uh. They look like they are their friends. Two figures showed from the fog. Never mind that, Munch. We just need to hurry with this play. The figures aimed their guns at the task force. Everyone was astonished by their valor but it would not explain how they sunk the battleships. Bang 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 the enemy opened fire and the destroyers who got hit immediately fell down. The power of the shells was enough to take down a destroyer. Without wasting a moment the heavy cruisers immediately split and tried to encircle the daring girls. The battle cruisers aimed their guns and prepared to open fire. Kaboom kaboom in a second everyone was deafened by the thunderous sound of guns firing, and when the heavy cruiser came to their senses they saw. How allied battle cruisers fell down. So Fable. Don't you think? Ha ha. So air is just too cool for them tilde. The heavy cruisers, who were rushing into the fight literally a few minutes ago, were now shaking like leaves during a storm. Oh, munch. There are a few of them remaining. What are we going to do tilde? Will you do me a favor? They are all yours. March eerie ho 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 tilde. Kaboom kaboom this was way too easy tilde. I hoped they would entertain us for a bit longer. Tilda two lonely trails cut the wavy surface of the ocean while they headed toward the sunset. V2CH34 Divided by two walls when the introductions were over I was asked to at least attend a few classes before making a decision to skip them. Then we were dismissed. I did not find Lilith where I left her outside the office and while I was wondering what is going on, I felt my back melting. I turned round and saw Lilith's mother. She had her eyes focused on me. I approached her. My good lady. This much is not enough to scare me away. The woman blushed but could not say anything aside from muttering something. Fori. Her voice was shaking and I thought that it might just be a misunderstanding. Could you please nod if I just misunderstood you and you are not angry at me? She nodded. Now that it is cleared, why don't we talk for a bit? Yes. Her voice is super silent, I might need to use the hydroacoustics array just to hear her. Choke. Can I use your name? It would be a shame to make somebody misunderstand when I talk about either of you. Please do. This time she was more confident. Very well, Miss Catalina. Can you tell me if Lilith had some problems that make her the brat? No. She is good girl. Sorry for me. See? Don't worry, my friend's mother is like my own mother. Considering that Catalina was feeling uncomfortable I headed to the exit I hope Lilith is still waiting for me. I won't find a way to the dorms by myself. Why did you leave me alone for so long? Right when I returned to the foyer I was knocked down by Lily, we were just having an introduction. Now, could you please let me stand up and guide me to the dormitory? She reluctantly stood up. The sky was black but the academy was brightly lit by lots of street lamps. The roads are paved with cut stone and are surrounded with flower beds and trees. It is no wonder that this place is suitable for nobles. If I was one then I would at least expect this much from a prestigious education establishment. There were no people outside and nobody took a stroll during this warm night. So just to make myself useful I wanted to do a little mischief. What are you doing? Lilith curiously asked me. Bang the academy was startled by a 102 mm blank shot. Miss Delight. This is a bad deed. L. I never thought I would hear that from the infamous brat. 
she immediately went silent. I won't inquire about it, don't worry. While you were there you must have met my mother. L, yes, I have, such a charming woman. I patted Lilith's back. Sometimes I really wonder what you are thinking about. You are the first to start a fight but also the first to do something incomprehensible. Use powerful magic to fight strong enemies and to coerce weak. Fight the orcs and then talk to them like you are best friends. Meet my mother and think she is charming. L, being mysterious is always attractive, right? Everybody wants to know more about you, yet you are always distant. It really does make one feel incomprehensible, but here you are, chatting with this mysterious being like best friends do. Funny thing, this talk about weird things during the night time. We both giggled before continuing to the dormitories. Unlike the majority of building in the academy, the dormitories are not painted white and their bricks remain visible. As Lilith explained there are four dorms here. Two for males and two for females. One for each social status, rich and powerful from highest levels of nobility are in one, and commoners and lower nobility are in the other. When Lilith and I arrived to her dormitory we were met by the supervisor, Miss Lilith Evan. How bold of you to arrive so late. I never thought you would bless us with your presence. The supervisor was mocking her right in front of my eyes. Oh my, Lily. Who is this servant? Did you not teach this poor commoner how to behave? The woman's face was distorted by wrath. Yet I continued, did you suddenly become mute? Who let you open your mouth at her? I smiled, who are you? Do you really think a nameless something like you can talk back at me? What's your name? The supervisor gloated as she opened the list of students. There should be the number of my room as well. Delight. The supervisor snickered as she searched through the list but as the time went on she was becoming paler and paler. When she saw my name in the list she was completely white. MMM. S. Stop hiccuping and talk. I don't want to waste all the night. We still have to finish girly talks. Miss. Your room is in the other dormitory. S. What? Lilith and I were supposed to be in the same housing. Hey, Lilith. What dormitory is this? I have a suspicion that, the poor one, I had no doubt that Miss Delight would be settled amongst the rich. She just shrugged her shoulders, just a moment, please. I headed outside, the principal already returned home, you will have to go to the other dormitory. Lilith put an indisputable end to today's problem, announcement yay, the novel finally reached top 150 in fantasy. Thanks for your support, comments are always appreciated, especially when they are left not only by Maple V2CH35. Blessed soft things because Lilith and I suddenly ended up living in different dormitories I had to go. The rich dormitory is just behind a small square so I found it immediately. Unlike Lilith's storm I was met by a butler and after I checked in I was led to my room. There are actually two dedicated rooms. One is for me and the other one is for a maid. When I checked my room I was a bit disappointed. I was expecting some sort of a huge room with all of the comfortable furniture one can have but in reality the room was a bit larger than the one I had in the university. There were only a desk, a wardrobe, and a bed. Sorry. Are you delight? A girl peeked inside my room. Indeed I am. What can I do for you? Sorry, I am late. I am Francis. I was assigned to be your maid. Please, call me if you need anything. Frances is a brunette with a thin waist. Instead of the Victorian maid uniform she was wearing a plain cloth dress of medieval age. I am so sorry miss. If you want to punish me for my mistake, please do. Suddenly she bowed down and I had to clear this misunderstanding. My apologies. I was just wondering why you were given such a plain uniform. This is a standard uniform everywhere. She scratched her cheek. Never mind, Francis. Can you tell me when the lessons will begin? Tomorrow Mississippi. Would you need my help unpacking the luggage? I only showed her my purse. Because I am a bit sleepy head I would like you to wake me up, just in case. Absolutely. 
Francis smiled and after a bow returned to her room. The next morning I woke up before Francis arrived. I dressed and after all the time since my arrival I changed the underwear. Something does tell me that my clothes don't get dirty from my own body. The door silently opened and I saw how Francis pushed in a small trolley. Oh, sorry, I am late. F. Don't worry about such small things. Oh my. Did you make me a breakfast? Yes Mississippi. I hope it will be worthy of your taste. F. I am not fussy, please, serve the dishes. I quickly finished the breakfast and headed out of the dormitory. I was one of the first to wake up and only a few girls were seen around me. They mostly were some brats wandering around after their maid servants made them wake up. The mature brats are too lazy and too bossy to wake up so early. At the square I saw Lily, before I called out to her I saw that she is not alone. I am so glad you are here, my sweet. A man was harassing my Lily. Just for the sake of clearing the obstacle I deployed the artillery. Right in that moment Lilith looked around her and saw me. Miss Delight, you are here. Have you slept well Tilda? She immediately glued herself to me. The man looked at me with jealousy. Don't you dare approaching my tits, you filth. My own glare and bloodlust Tora were enough to make him shiver. Lilith, explain what is going on. The man started demanding something. Lily, can I please kill this garbage? I prepared to send him some cars. What do you want me to explain? She shrugged her shoulders and started rubbing against me like a cat. Meanwhile, I was holding back the nosebleed. Why are you rubbing against that woman but never did that with me? M. Lily, just tell me already. I want to blow him apart. Because. Because I love her. Don't stand in the way of our love. What? There. F. Please, play along. L. You succubus. Well, this is one and only chance for me. Grope I groped Lilith's breast and now I really feel something coming out of my nose. Even if I die, it was worth it. Ah she moaned and our 18 content is unavailable. Please, try again later. What the? Question mark. The man was astonished and after he recovered a bit he stomped away in fury. When I was about to let go of Lilith's I felt how she was holding my hand there. To hell with everything. If I am going to die from bleeding then let me feel it till the bitter end. We can do it later Tilda. Right now we should go to the lecture hall. If you want, we can sit together at the back row and do it. Tilda. I was soaking in all of Lilith's perverted words. Just a bit longer, I suppose we have no reason to rush Tilda. L, our 18 content is unavailable. Please, try again later. We were a bit late but when I said my name the teacher pretended he did not begin the class. Even though he already started writing on the blackboard. Why does it feel like I turn Lilith into a W? V2CH36. A wild blonde appears the first day was about us getting reacquainted with the teachers and learning the semester's schedule. I was not surprised by the classrooms. They were just filled with school desks and had some paintings. A stereotypical rich school with nothing worthy of a note. After the lunchtime began we headed at the restaurant. Yes. This school has an actual restaurant and there is a large menu to satisfy any noble demand. The scholarship appears to be covering the majority of food expenses but the rich and powerful are commonly buying the food with their own money. Because we too are dirt poor we have to use the scholarship. Our meals are plain and simple so we could only lament and eat. I was thinking who that garbage was. I asked Lily, R, don't mind him. He is my fiancé. I never agreed to this but my parents were on the seventh heaven when I was proposed to. Kill. 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 Oh my, is that so? Will you acquaint us? Kill. 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 You don't have to hide it. I hate him too. Why can't I have you as my waifu? We happily ate our meal when a person appeared out of nowhere. Evan, here you are. Do you think you can stop me just by disappearing? A blonde with curly hair approached us with a tray. Get lost. Lilith was irritated. You dare ordering me around? You are just a baron's daughter. 
You should be grateful I even talk to you. The blonde does not understand that Lilith's social status is not important because she is my goddess, ha. Huh? Lilith was looking like she was pulling out her hair. Miss, if you have so much free time then why don't you spend it studying? Picking catfights is not going to do anything useful. And who are you? Present yourself. Now I wanted to follow Lilith's lead. If you don't want to present yourself then you will be obliged after I do so. I am Charlotte de Terroin. I allow you to talk to me. Ho ho ho. She is starting to make me angry. Very well, I am Her Majesty's faithful servant. You may call me Delight. Are you a commoner? You don't have a family name. She was confused. Oh my. This name was bestowed to me by Her Majesty. This name is above any family name in importance. I just see no use in using it. Ugh. Right. Uh, wait. Who are you to talk to me so casually? I did not allow you to do so. Now I allow it. What? There. F. Hey, Evan. Did you finally crawl out of your crib? I never thought you would try to find yourself a company. Ho 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 Tilda. This Charlotte was mocking Lilith right in the middle of the restaurant but nobody even tried stopping her. Speaking of which, Miss Charlotte must have had a reason to come here. I reminded her that she was here for a reason. Ah, right. I wanted to remind you, Lily, that you will not have my husband. Never ever. Farewell. The Charlotte Hurricane disappeared as suddenly as she arrived. When I looked around I saw that she just sat at a table with other rich girls and occasionally glanced at our table. What a bee. She constantly harasses me and whenever I end up seeing her she provokes me. Lilith grits her teeth. Poor girl. I can comfort you, if you want. Tits, come here. Why can't this bee be as nice as you are? Lilith moved her seat closer to me and comforted my arm. For an unknown reason Lilith had to leave the table for some time. Casus relinquendi is flower viewing. It is surely not the same as what one may think because beautiful girls don't use the toilet. I'm beautiful and I never used it. Hey. Not again. Hey, I am talking to you. Just ignore her. Hey. Don't ignore me. I am talking to you. You should feel honored that I am talking to you. Lilith, please, hurry. I did not pay her attention until Lilith returned. Charlotte did not see her return so she continued. Please. Just look at me. At least pretend I am here. Charlotte was on the brink of crying. Hey, can you leave Miss Delight alone? You are now pestering both of us. Lilith was displeased to say the least. It is none of your business Evan. I am here to invite her to be my follower. If you have any problems with this then just leave my husband alone and you can join my clique as well. Ho ho ho. Both Lily's and mine eyes twitched. Can you let us finish the lunch? I tried to be gentle and I did not even hear an evident sarcasm in my tone. My offer still stands. Find me when you are ready to join my clique. Ho ho ho. The Charlotte Hurricane 2.0 disappeared. What will we do next? I asked my tits. The next lesson is theoretical magic and it will be an actual lesson, unlike the previous. She sighed but I was a bit anticipating what I will learn. V2CH37. The basics of physics Lilith and I were sitting next to each other in the magic classroom. If I understand correctly the students are divided into three classes. There were quite a lot of people here and some of them were not familiar to me. Why there are so many people from other classes here? You already know we are in the experimental magic department. Other departments are practical magic department and administration department. The curriculum of the departments is different so when we are having the department lessons the students from different classes group with the others from their department. So those are just modules. Funny that I don't see the hurricane. What? L? I mean Charlotte. If she's your rival then why is she not here? She is in the administration department. L? Lily, is the seat next to you occupied? While we were chatting an unexpected obstacle showed up. No it's not. Miss Delight already sits next to me. 
Her fiancé showed his ugly face right next to us. Oh, sorry for bothering. Miss, I don't think I saw you here before. The man stood in front of my desk and smiled. Now that I have nowhere to run I will have to talk to him. I am Delight, Her Majesty's faithful servant. He looked at me with surprise. My apologies but I never saw you in the palace. Are you new there? I glanced at Lily. She nodded. If we understood each other correctly then this bastard must be a prince. I think you misunderstood me. I am in service to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, not to your country's queen. The betrothed looked at me with their eyes and mouths wide opened. Ah, sorry for this. The man returned to us faster than Lily, khm khm. I gently hinted him that he forgot something. Right, I am the crown prince of our country. You can call me Michael. At last I know how this bastard is named. Before the bastard had chance to continue wasting our precious time, the teacher arrived. Immediately after Mr. Frangle saw me he began waving me with excited look. I used gestures to explain him that I am in the middle of the lesson and wait for him. All right, students, we have a new and exciting type of magic we will study in this semester. Some of you might have heard it. I surely did and almost had my poor ears bleed. By the looks of Miss Delight I can already guess she knows exactly what I am talking about. Ha <laughs> ha. If this man eavesdropped then he should start writing a will. What magic will we be learning? Mr. Frank? A female voice asked. Yes, you did not explain. The student's attention was already caught and I could only start imitating Catalina's glare. Yesterday you must have heard that bang. Our new student of honor really did surprise everybody. The teacher giggled. Oh my. Did I give a permission to study this surely copyrighted magic? Also, even if you do understand how it works you will not be able to copy it. You don't have enough cordite. And if you do then you won't be able to carry enough of it. Well, we won't be studying exactly the magic you used but we will learn how to use explosion magic. As everyone here knows explosion spells are used only by the fire magic school. Now here is my question to everybody. Are there any ways to make explosions without being a fire mage? MF. The class was completely silent. Even the rear rows, which are inhabited by the gossipers, were silent. Can you assist me with this one, Mr. Light? MF. I might know the answers but considering what you did previously I shall abstain. Mr. Frangle went silent and looked at me like an abandoned puppy. Fine. But only in short. It is possible if you know how and of basic understanding of physics. Everything can explode as long as the conditions are met. I gave him the helping hand but now he is to do everything by himself. Indeed. The recent breakthrough showed us that the explosions are not limited only to the fire magic school. Now, my dear students, please open your notebooks and start writing today's subject the temperature difference as a possible catalyst for an explosion. If I were to assess today's magic class it would be worthy of being considered a physics for the beginners. After the class we were told to go to the practice ground. Looks like it's time to unpack the 356. New Year Extra Chapters HMS Delight Royal Navy Dormitory. At the third floor, where the battleships and battle cruisers live. There is a small room in the furthermost corner. The door silently creaked and a figure in the sky blue cloak rambled out of the room. What a nice morning. Looks like today the maids did not wake up anybody. The sole occupant of the room was already used to being alone. Back when she was a ship she had all the glory and honor but now that the real pride of the Royal Navy is here she was not getting that much attention. Delight went to the dining room to have a light breakfast before heading out. Good morning, everybody. Today the dining room was almost empty. Some girls waved back before returning back to eating. She has some admirers and the mostly they consist of the destroyers who got wrecked by her. Good morning to you, Delight. Have you slept well? Hood was already eating the breakfast. It is not an opportunity Delight can let pass. She grabbed herself some oatmeal and tea. Auntie Hood, can I sit next to you? 
Hood's face twitched for a moment. While she doesn't like such being called auntie she has to accept it. After all, she really is Delight's aunt. Of course, I am glad to have some company. After the breakfast Delight headed towards the shop to buy some presents for the New Year party. When she walked out of the dormitory she was intercepted by Her Majesty, Delight. We were looking for somebody. You will go to our servant and replace us in the commission team. All emotions from irritation to resentment flashed in Delight's mind. But she is not somebody who can refuse the Queen's order. Absolutely, my liege. With this she headed to the HQ. As always the headquarters are busy. The maids are going back and forth with papers and occasional tea. Some volunteers like Z23 and London are filling in the papers. The secretary ships are doing the errands and the commander is wandering around with as much work as Delight has. Good morning, you excellency. Her majesty sent me here for the commission team. After all Delight had no way to refuse. Good to see you. Are you doing fine? Of course, I have my own room and I had a nice breakfast with auntie. This meaningless chatter was a bit irritating because Delight had some things she wanted to do but she still enjoys having the little talks she has with the commander. Usually she doesn't even get a chance to see them. The commission team was already sent so I guess you can go now. If you want, I can accompany you. Help me, please. I am sorry to make you look after me. The two free souls were now free to go and buy something. When they reached the shops they separated and Delight was now free to go and search for the gifts. After a lot of time she chose to buy a scarf. In the evening the New Year celebration party began. The girls were exchanging gifts with their friends and families. Delight was trying to find an opening to give Hood the scarf. When the opening appeared the doors to the dormitory were opened and the commander walked in. Delight was the closest one to the door and so she decided to just be the first at least here. The commander is not the beloved auntie but at least not a bad person. If only the commander arrived a minute later. She passed her gift to the commander while pouting. They accepted the gift and before Delight took away her hands she received a gift for herself. While she was confused, without saying any words, the commander hugged her. IJN Fujisugura Empire Dormitory. The Kitsune family was preparing for the New Year party. While Akagi and Kaga were decorating the room, Tasa was busy keeping Amagi away from the work. Only one of the members was sitting in the corner pouting. Why those useless hairballs are the ones decorating. If it was for me I'd do everything differently. Those stupid paintings and charms. I'd rather have a Christmas tree. Stop saying nonsense, you brat. You are rotten to the core with those eagle guys. I even saw you hang out with their carriers. Akagi was already at the limit of her patience. Whenever Fuji had to choose between traditional and eagles she would choose the latter. It is better to be rotten than to be digested first bitted out and turned into you. Fuji sent her big sisters the finger and rushed out of the room before she got the retaliation. Nobody in this dormitory could understand her. Nobody is smart enough to hang out with. Nobody here can get out of their shell and look around. She is the vanguard of progress and can see what is in front of them. Why can't they do the same? Why? The carriers must be like that. And also they must have their decks built like that, and also they must have their planes operated like that, and surely don't need to have eagles weaponry. Fuji did not even realize that she was in front of the fountain until she bumped into its side. Well, I am close to the HQ, might as well look how that person fares. Before she entered the HQ she met Queen Elizabeth. What are you doing here? We thought Sigurd Dormitory is in the middle of its preparations. For a second the queen was confused but she composed herself before she could be seen through. That would be like that for everybody but Fuji. Let me guess. You were asked to stay away from the navy's dorm to have a surprise party. Now she only needs to see what will be the reaction. W what are you? No. It's not like that. We. Are taking a stroll. The fish took the bait but considering that the party starts soon Fuji did not continue toying with this dreadnought. Not today. Is the commander in the office? Yes. 
As you can see we were helping him. Queen smugly smiled but Fuji could only feel sorry for the poor paper stainer. When Fuji saw that the commander's office is guarded by Tei Aiho, she called her back up. During her stay here Fuji figured out some of the ship's weaknesses. Now she only needs to make this stupid bird go away and the road to the commander will be opened. What is it? Albacore emerged right behind Fuji's back. THG. A. Make Taiho go away, the payment will be high but the ends justify the means. Albacore did everything perfectly and made Taiho retreat while screaming in terror. With the bird out of the sight Fuji entered the office. The commander was writing something behind a wall of papers. Now it's the time. Anachan Tilda, play with me Tilda. Cute fox mode activated. This retard will always play with her if she keeps acting cute. And then she can order them around to have anything done for her sake. Flawless. Oh, come here, sweet foxy. Now that Fuji is in commander's arms she only needs to finish the plan. Will you come and play with me at the party? Head tilted at 17 to the right side. The perfect position for requests. 10 minutes later. The sliding doors opened and Fuji walked into the Kitsune family's room. Fuji. Here you are. You made us all worried. Amagi affectionately patted her little sister. So you are finally back. How your eagle friends are doing? Akagi indifferently asked, just so as not to receive Magi's punishment. While their big sister is here nobody dares arguing. Yes. Everyone is fine. I even brought a friend with me Tilda. Amagi's hand continued playing with Fuji's hair. Oh. Really Tilda? Akagi was now agitated. Yes. Anachan Tilda, come in Tilda. The commander walked inside. Ah Tilda, Commander Sama Tilda. The bee is on the hook. Anachan Tilda, feed me Tilda. Fuji jumped into the commander's arms and snuggled. Akagi's face was worth all the effort. The night of torture begins. IJN Kurinami Sigura Empire Dormitory. Since the dawn Mikasa was cleaning as preparation before the party, the other girls were busy decorating, cooking or cleaning. The entire dormitory was busy with work. Ah, so nice to be young. If only I had as much energy as they do. She observed the scurrying girls with a wide smile. Ponk suddenly, the mop hit a brown cardboard box which lied in the middle of the room. Mikasa tried lifting up the box but it was so heavy that there must be something inside. The box is well packed and has only a few markings. This side up, fragile, handle with care and the destination. The destination was the Royal Navy dormitory. The box was swiftly delivered there. The royal maids took the box to the kitchen for now. It was the only place where their superiors don't wander in while the preparations are done. When everybody left the box opened. Good job, girls. This time I will show Her Majesty that I am better than Belfast. Edinburgh happily walked into the kitchen and looked through the list of dishes. It was then she noticed that a few of the dishes are empty. No. While the desperate cries were heard from the kitchen, Javelin was heading out to play with her friends. In the middle of the foyer she saw a large red box with some marks on top of it. When she looked closer she saw that the box should be delivered to the Iron Blood dormitory. She will need to pick up Nimai so why not take the box as well. So heavy. She struggled but carried the box all the way to the Iron Blood dorms. There the box was delivered to Bismarck's room. She was expecting a delivery so nobody questioned where the box should be taken. The box opened when everybody left. What is this box doing here? Turpitz headed out to buy something for her sister. At least she will try to gift it. However, her way was blocked by a large orange box. Destination, Eagle Union's dormitory. Sister. Before Turpitz left the dormitory she was called by Bismarck. Yes. Awkward silence. Have you seen my chess board? I didn't find it in my room. No. Uh, good luck. Now that the talk was over they tried to end it decently. Good luck. Turpets have nothing to do so she left the box in front of the Union's dormitory. The box continued its voyage until it ended up near the Christmas tree. 
Everything was silent around so the box opened. Two cat ears peeked out and then, What are you doing here? A drowsy voice called her. I am standing here. The monotonous voice responded. Eldridge and Curan army were staring at each other. I am fairy, if you will be a good girl you will get a present. It was now or never for Curan army. Okay. Go to your room and wait for the party. You will get a present. Eldridge nodded and left. Now the room was empty. And then I said, great job. I never thought they'd be so happy to be praised. Bro is the best. Come on. Why am I always the bro? Hey, what's that box doing here? Cleveland and her sisters surrounded the blue box. Look here. There is a destination. It should be taken to the commander. Let's do this. Cleaverband took the box and carried it right to the commander's office. When the girls in charge of the snacks saw a shortage they just put another chips and cola on the table. The commander was not in the office so Cleaverband left the box inside and headed to play basketball while waiting for the party to start. The box opened again. Ha! I'm so tired. The commander dragged their feet through the hallway. There are still some papers to be signed. Even though the party is about to start, the commander came to terms with the fact that they will miss the parties tonight. The additional work was caused by the fact that a lot of things disappeared today. The door creaked and commander entered the office. Where's the damned switch? They were trying to turn on the light but nothing happened. Aha! Uh -huh. The light turned on and... Hello, master. The emotionless face of Curan army was the first thing the commander saw. They barely kept themselves from screaming. When the too close for comfort face moved back the commander saw that the coffee table and the desk were covered in dishes and snacks. Everything that went missing today and made the commander's head think about more things than there should be. It was all here. Curan army already folded her ears and closed her eyes. She was completely prepared to receive her master's praise and patting for her work. Even though she caused a lot of problems today, the commander could not get angry with her, because everything she did was to make them happy. The commander sighed. The small party for the two of them began. Announcement Happy New Year. V2CH38. Firing range as we walked to the practice grounds I thought it would be a good idea to improve my weaponry. I am sure they would try to make me show off my firepower. Ding you received admission gift, 15 upgrade points, 3 silver coins you received 10 copper coins, 1 fire extinguisher, 6 upgrade points, 445 MK19, replaces SG, 1445 MK7, replaces MG, 2 modernization points, 20 mm slash 70 MKI, Replaces Light AA, HMS Delight, BC, Mod, 1945-1949, Modernization Progress 010, Accuracy, 2 one hundredths Reload, 5 one hundredths Recoil, 1 one hundredth Machinery, 99-25 Guns, 53-25 Equipment, 99-25, Main Guns 14-45 MK7, Loaded. 0 8 fire at 0 half range minus 35 kilometers secondary guns 445 mk19 loaded 0 12 fire at 120 range minus 18 kilometers tertiary guns 350 mk10 loaded 0 4 fire at 0 0.7515 aa guns 37 millimeters pom pom quadruple mount loaded 32 30 seconds. 20 mm slash 70 MKIO Ehrlichan. Loaded. 10 tenths. 0 0.562 MK3 number 3. Loaded. 8 eighths. Now that I dropped my explosion chances to either I explode or not I can start worrying about the I can't hit even an elephant from 100 meters. Meanwhile. We arrived at the practice grounds and there I saw much more people than I originally expected. Why are there people from other departments? Every department has magic classes and both magic departments have practice. So we are having combined lessons to instigate a competition. 
they claim it will make everybody try their best to learn and beat the other department, now that we have you. Well, you get it. Lilith finished her brief introduction. What about the administration department? They have magic classes but not practice. Neither of them is capable of actually using magic but at least they should know what it is. Poor Hurricane. Clap clap. All right, guys. Welcome to the first practice class of this semester. Yeah, I see the familiar faces. Now, who wants to show their best today? We. The crowd must like that teacher a lot. Who's the first? Who's the first? Mr. Dot Callens continued cheering the students. One of the students stepped forward and headed right to the firing range. The teacher casts some sort of a spell and semi-transparent targets appeared. The student started casting a spell and launched a small fireball at one of the targets. The next student casted a ray of light. There was also a ray of darkness, a burst of air and other superior spells which could hardly damage a tree. The next to cast was Michael. He launched a bolt of fire but unlike the previous contestants the target was evaporated while the bolt continued flying. It is impressive in comparison with the previous spells. The next will be our prodigy, Miss Evan, if you will. All eyes were focused on Lily. She casted a nice shard which penetrated the target with ease. Like, okay. Why is she a prodigy? She casted a spell and that's it. What is so prodigy about it? I asked her. They call me like that not because of the spells but because of my magic school. My skeptical look did not change so she will have to explain. My school is void so I can learn magic from any magic school. The others can only use magic from their school. Fire mage can't shoot icicles while light mage can't use lightning. Okay, cheaty side character is confirmed. And now, we have our student of honor, Mr. Light, if you will. MC, I walked to the position and summoned the gear. The 14-inch guns were aimed at a huge magic protected target the teacher created specifically for me. I don't feel like firing this time. Can we do it the next time? I am still not sure that this is a good idea. I can just explode here. At least give it a try. We all are eager to see the magic you possess. Fine. Requiem. Memento Mori. All gun barrels dropped into the loading position. The electro-hydraulic systems worked relentlessly. The charges and the shell are loaded on the autoloader. The first pair of guns is loaded. The second pair had the hydraulics jam before the shell was delivered. The third pair rose to the firing position. And the final pair was now ready to open fire. Okay, I am ready. Somewhat. Tell everybody to close their ears as tightly as they can. Trust me. It will be loud. Lilith already prepared to see the carnage. The other students were a bit skeptical and only a few closed their ears. Whatever. Do as you like. Let us release the fire. Boom boom the ground shook after the first shots. I confirmed that my range estimations were crap. The students who did not close their ears were now lying on the ground and desperately holding hands on the ears. Boom boom I did not expect to have any hits at the target but I can always pretend it is because I was not ready. Boom boom the final shots of my cannonade were fired with the same result. While everybody was trying to process what happened I took Lilith with me. The classes should be over by now so why not go and play around? A side story of darkness and a cat no ten. Overkill after a breakfast I was taken to a weird building where I was given a piece of metal. The others insisted that I don't throw it away so I had to keep it with me, even though it serves no purpose. All right, guys, I found a nice looking quest with a good reward. It should be enough to cover her food expenses for an entire week. P.F. What's the catch? F. The catch is that we will fight underwater. Let's go buy ourselves some breathing potions, magic clamps and harpoons. With this we all headed to buy the things required. The adventurers were picking unknown bottles with colored liquid. Then they bought several lamps and harpoons. With this we headed to the north and after several hours of riding in a carriage we arrived to a lake. The plan is to divide into two groups. 
One of the groups will dive and draw the water wyvern's attention. When the monster becomes agitated the divers will make it surface and the main group will kill it. The main group will remain in a boat until the monster is on the surface. Easy plan. P.F. Where will I be? I needed to have an understanding of what my actions should be. You will be on the surface. Your fire magic will kill the wyvern, I hope. Lane, with this we moved out on two boats, one for each group. In the middle of the lake our boat was shaken and I ended up overboard. Oh ass, somebody, help her. The others started panicking. Ping, ping, ping. I detected something underwater. A submarine? Are there any underwater enemies? I just need to make sure. Swim away. Save yourself. Ping ping ping. So? Yes, yes, yes. Now run. Commencing ASW. Pew 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 depth charges. Shot. Bum 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 an unknown biological form surfaced. The submarine signal disappeared. Just what the hell happened? I don't want to know. And why the hell were we preparing for so long? V2CH39 Poor girls go shopping I would have never thought I would find myself liking shopping. Yet here I am in the nearby city's shopping district. The academy is located just 30 minutes away from the city. This is the time required to get there by foot, not by riding a carriage. However, in front of the city's gate there were many carriages which headed out of the academy. Sometimes I do wonder why those noble guys are so lazy to just walk for a bit. Because of the academy's proximity the shopping district of the city is prospering. The flabby beings always want to have everything comfortable, luxurious and pricey so the fact that the majority of the shops are oriented for the money bag clients was not surprising. The prices here start with expensive and then skyrocket to the levels when even the royal family can barely afford the goods. If you try hard you can find anything that a noble would need during their school years. From a custom made school desk with polished golden surface to a small pillow to comfortably sleep during the lessons. While I did take Lilith here to wander around with me and maybe buy something cheap. I accidentally ended up in a place where even my tea stockpile would look cheap and useless. We walked by shop fronts and windows where were displayed gorgeous dresses for any taste and purse but considering how rich we are we could only gulp and keep going. Tua, I am so jealous that we have no way to buy those. L, I wonder if we can find an atelier, I have some ideas which can result in good dresses. I have a good idea. Follow me. Lilith led me to a back street where common shops resided. If the main streets are the shining display of wealth and fashion then these back streets are where the shops for the actual inhabitants of this city are located. We walked into a small shop with no sign. Inside there was a small desk where sat a middle-aged woman. When we entered she glanced at us and immediately returned to a magazine she was reading. Hello. We want to order some dresses. L, full ignore mode. Uh. Can you call Auntie Flo? L, she moved out. No idea where she is now. Stop pestering me. The woman did not even try to hide her irritation. Oh my. Can you tell us what this place sells? Frills and other decorated clothes. After they went out of fashion the shop entered its decline. Now even the common people don't care for that. I am so glad that small girls still like frilly dresses. The heart-piercing tale of this shop made me want to support it. If you can make me a nice dress. You did not hear me? Nobody would like such a dress. W. Give me a piece of paper, I'll make a sketch. I quickly drew what I had in mind. Now that is something unusual. I am sure it will be a piece of cake to make but I still wonder why you want me to make such a dress? I repeat, nobody would think it is fashionable. W. I think frilly dresses are so cute, and if I can have one then why would I ever care about the other's opinion? I couldn't tell her the real reason. Understood. What colors should I use? The woman was excited to have a client after so long. The black and white dress with a lot of frills where is drew loops, laces are where the hatching, can you do it? Absolutely, it will be done in a week. W, great, how much would it cost? 
17 gold coins. The woman was nervous. I estimated the price for the clothes and decorations. Sounds reasonable. Handmade accessories or bought? Everything is handmade. She said proudly. I wondered if we have enough money. I glanced at Lilith and she passed me a bag of coins. Six gold coins are not enough but it will be used to pay in advance. Right after we left the shop I wanted to visit some other places. Speaking of which, why did you order such a dress? They were popular five years ago but now even the commoners don't wear them. Until we have an idea where to go we stopped nearby. Oh my, this dress is not to show off but to please my eyes. My maid will wear it, I can't wait to see her in this dress Tilda. So, you mean you spend all the money to just... Before Lily finished her accusation the woman almost jumped out of the shop and headed somewhere. Judging by how energized she is, she really does want to make the dress. Inspiration is such a nice, weird thing. Considering that we have no money left we had to return to the academy empty-handed. A side story of darkness and a cat no eleven. The problems of rich after we confirmed the target was destroyed we returned to the town. While the men went to report the task is completed, the female led me somewhere. So, cure an army. What would you like to eat today? F. Tuna. Anything else? F. Mackerel. Any. F. Cake. Great. Wonderful. Terrific. Follow me. She suddenly perked up. When we entered a shop I was passed to a waiter to whom the female said something about stuffing, food and a pig. I was seated and immediately the waiter brought a lot of sweets and snacks. I started eating. How can such a thin girl eat so much? I would have never thought it is possible to put all of that inside such a small stomach. You bet I never saw anybody eating so much. Even the adventurers never ate more than two full plates but she. Meanwhile, I finished eating the appetizer and patiently waited for the first dish. Hey, waiter, bring me some food, will ya? A man started shouting. Please, wait for a moment. Everyone is busy. The waiters put down some plates in front of me. Hey, are you so insolent because you forgot how to fear? Bring me the scoff. The man continued shouting. We are already serving another customer. Just wait for a minute. Like hell I'd wait for you. Hey, boys, that beast looks like it is a lot of money. Go beat the sea out of it. I sensed a number of people approaching me. You beast, go the he. Slash what the? Slash, cut, pierce, slash I apologize for the mess. You can continue working. The waiters started moving like puppets but soon I had my table filled with food. V2CH40. Testing lateness the school life was proceeding smoothly. There were no constant fights. No searching for money and no need to tolerate a certain night. What are we going to do now? Lilith was cuddling to me even during the lessons. At first I was wondering why she is doing that but by now I accepted it as a part of her behavior. We should go and find ourselves some books. I heard that there will be a test tomorrow so I will need to at least have a basic understanding of what is going on. I wanted to visit the academy's library for a number of reasons. I will not be bothered there. I will have some quiet time with Lilith, and I will read some books and maybe encounter something interesting. I pushed a large wooden door and let Lilith squeeze while I held it. Some people warned me that this bastard of a door is so heavy it can flatten a human and after I tried its weight I can confirm that it is better not to be near this thing if it is about to fall down. I was expecting a huge amount of shelves filled with books and scrolls but the reality was disappointing. There were less than 50 bookshelves in total and the majority of books there were school books. I approached the librarian to ask about where the hell are the other books. Excuse me, are these the only books the academy has? Of course not. There are more books but the students are not allowed to search for them without permission from their teachers. So in other words the students should not learn anything aside from what the teachers want them to learn. And what about the students of Honor Tilda? Speech check. No. 
failed. And how do you expect me to learn about the history of this country if neither of the books here has information about it? Then go and ask the history teacher for the permission. Logic, where are you? Like what the hell? I need to take a book and I need to have someone's permission for this while I am doing it in the middle of the academy where I study. I returned back to the reality only when I was outside of the library. Lilith dragged me outside when she saw that I am having a mental breakdown. I could only sigh and head to the principal's office. She said she will be taking care of this. So let her handle her own mess. While we walked I saw that Lilith was looking at a group of girls. What is it? Can I go talk with them? She fidgeted. But of course Tilda. Have fun Tilda. I encouraged her. If I am correct then she has some problems making friends. I sincerely hope she will be able to make some friends on her own. I really do start looking like her second mother, however. If the numbers are correct then I should be considered her grand-grandmother. I had no trouble going straight to the principal and after I knocked and was let in I began explaining the problem. I get what you are trying to tell me but it was not me who implemented such a system. I will give you a letter and you will get all the necessary permissions just by showing it to the teachers but don't expect me to just do everything with a flick of fingers. I can't change anything without the king's consent. P. Still. It is irrational. You want rationality? Then let me tell you this. The nobles don't usually like books anyway. The commoners are illiterate. Moreover, the books are expensive and rare. In your country it might be common to have a lot of books but here even the nobles have trouble obtaining them. To make sure the books are not stolen the students are required to have permission. Only if you have desire to take a school book while a lot would want a normal book for free. P. But. Your logic is not applicable to the cultures that are different from your own. Ha ha. At least I can finally see there is something you can be taught. The principal was amused while I was disheartened. With the tests approaching I had no way but to quickly search for the teachers and get their honorable permissions to prepare for the tests. Because I spent a lot of time running around I had less time to prepare than I expected. Not to mention I had no time to cuddle with Lily. I feel like I managed to prepare somewhat well but I doubt it will be enough to squeeze even B. I was considering using the tete -tete testing but I dared participating with the other students. Will I have a good mark? Don't worry. With such a great ability as yours you will surely be amongst the best. We approached the ranking and I saw that I am at the twelfth place. Congrats. Miss Delight is always the best Tilda. My greatest reward is that I had Lily rub against me. Ow, she's so cute Tilda. V2CH41. A certain cruiser's bad mood today was another practical lesson. I was tearfully asked to go and find myself something else to do but I still attended the class. I was not too surprised to see that the idling students even made a living chain to keep myself away from the firing range. Fire or not to fire, that is the question. I walked away from the students and the range and when I was 200 meters away, I turned around. The fate itself must have tried to punish me but aside from a fire I managed to load half of the guns and before the effects ended the first turret had its breaches open for loading. As if everybody knew what is going to happen. The range was cleared and now everybody graced me with having their ears closed. I was clear to open fire. Boom. Close fly by boom. Not so close fly by boom ah, ah. Everybody screamed when the target was torn apart. The shell somehow managed to hit the target and destroyed it. Usually the magic was only blackening it a bit or making it wet but my shot just left nothing but a crater. Next target, please Tilda. I am so pleased to have something hit after so long that I am really getting overexcited. Not that it can be helped. It would be a light to tell that anything was hit after that but it was enough to make me withdraw and let the others finally return to their practice without worrying about a 700 kilograms hello hitting the backs of their heads. Just in case it worked out I tried opening the ding menu. Ding you received 6 copper coins, 2 skill points, 2 upgrade points, 20 millimeters slash 70 mkv o 
replaces light AA, 350MK34, replaces TG, HMS Delight, BC, mod, 1945-1949, modernization progress 2 tenths, accuracy, 2 one hundredths reload, 5 one hundredths recoil, 1 one hundredth machinery, 99-25 guns, 51-25 equipment, 99-25 end of block 1.